Hello, chat. I hope you can hear me, because it's been one of those days. This is Magic Fish Radio, where we stream tabletop RPGs. Uh, on Tuesday nights, we run Vampire the Masquerade V5, but set in the 1920s, so a whole lot of that new lore hasn't happened yet. Or maybe it will, just in, in a fun, archaic, vintage way. We'll see. Uh, and on Saturday nights, we alternate between NWOD and Space, which is the game I run. And this week, we are doing Indie Game Night on Saturday, uh, TBD. <laughs> Might just be me running Demon Hunters again, we'll see. My ADHD has been in full swing for this whole year thus far, so there are a lot of things I have not been pursuing on social media that I should as channel producer. Whoops. Uh, but luckily, I'm not GMing tonight, so tonight won't be a total train wreck. Yay! Or even anything approaching a train wreck except by whatever bad idea... Whatever Malkavian province of bad idea island we three end up in. Yay. Uh, if, if you're watching live, yay! Awesome! Use channel points! Buy stuff for us in-game with channel points, because we don't use cash here because no one we know has any. Or at least not any to spare. Uh, so you can buy plus ones for players, plus ones for the GM, willpower for players, or turn a... Bestial failure into a messy critical. That. So yes, yeah, so use your channel points. If you're watching as VOD, uh... Also, thank you for watching. Thank you for your future eyeballs helping whatever channel you're watching us on with our algorithmic problems. Yay! Uh, and with that, I forget what else I need to say as producer, so John! Chicken. What we doing tonight? Woohoo! Tonight, we return to the City of Light, and you will all continue your path through Paris. A city in which you have discovered that there are a few hunters running around in the Nosferatu who are trying to quietly handle that. You also find out that there's a Bruja, the child of the Primogen, who is kind of a dick. And um, it really feels like only the Primogen might have an issue with something happened to him, but... Based on what you've been led to believe, it's not like the Primogen would look into it that hard. Okay. Just saying. But that all depends on what you all get up to this evening. And before we get on to that, we should probably remind everyone or introduce ourselves in the event someone finally took my advice and decided to tune into a live airing. And they need to actually get to know who each of you are. So, starting directly below me, Dracus, if you would so kindly. Oh, that's. That's not how it looks on the stream, but okay. <laughs> well, from I'm... my perspective. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Dracus. I'm playing Vern Quincy, who is a Nosferatu. Um, my concept initially was uh, upper-class socialite turned fucked up sewer dweller, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here for some chaos. It'll be fun. All right, and this then brings us to Airy. Hi, I am playing Isabel Quincy, uh, Vern's younger, younger, older sister, who is, yeah, has has been around for less time, but has been a vampire for longer. <laughs> so that's a thing. Um, who is also here to make bad decisions and uh, go totally with them, uh, and we 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 have lost our one party member who has uh, impulse control. Oh, you didn't lose her. For a bit, we have. She's not here right now. You got something better. <laughs> well, you don't know that Risa doesn't have any impulse control. It's just a different kind of impulse control. Don't be so judgmental, you ventru bitch. And finally, bringing us around to our wonderful channel producer, for which we would have no one here otherwise. Hello, I'm Chris, or Ms. Chrysala, and I'm playing Sharice Lowell, um, who is a Mulcavian, and she seemed very <coughs> together and unremarkable and kind of boring and, and like, responsible for a Mulcavian. 
until something happened and now she is a completely different person with a whole different regional accent and immediately blood bonded one of her coterie mates to her for funsies and it's 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 hashtag mock life it's truly delightful I not look... ha- nice not having to wear my cut my collar button at all the way up I cannot even begin to express to you how much I'm looking forward to this playing out. So sometimes she's Sharice, sometimes she's Riza. Woohoo! Why? Well, ask the right questions. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> all those, all those repressed Victorian desires had to go somewhere. Oh man. So this That's is a the yikes. So, th- so this is the id. That's why, why, well, Cherise's beast has a southern accent. Woo-hoo. Anyway. So yeah, channel points. Spend them. Make our <laughs> roles better. Or worse. Uh, or worse. Or make the GM's roles better. Uh, oh, or that's right. Um, no impact at all, because... Sometimes all these dice will just come up zero because somebody <laughs> wanted the party to completely mind rape that woman and the guy she was sleeping with. I it's fine. Let's, let's Sorry. not use that Poor word. choice of words. Yeah. Poor choice of words. Content warning. Terribly sorry. But y'all basically did just stick your finger into their brains and then hit frappe. I did. They're fine. <laughs> They're fine. It's fine. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, GM, you have 20 plus ones. Unless you used any last game and didn't tell me. Nope, Uh, I told you every time I used one. Players, uh, we have four plus ones, one willpower, and one crit change. So if any of you ever do roll badly and you wind up getting a bestial failure, you can now turn that to a messy critical. But if you get just a regular failure, you are still S of that. <clears throat> so, yes. Let's bring us back into the late evening on the streets of Perry, having now left a Malkavian-owned establishment and the revelation of your cohorts. Mm otherwise silent passenger dragging down uh, dragging you both down along the street one of you following slightly more animatedly than the other shall we say uh, <laughs> Isabel has a new best friend yay I guess that's no. how it is uh here, would you actually pay me, hand me those papers by that TV, please? Um, so yeah, you know, Vern, I'm actually... You know what blood bonding looks like, and they did get fed off screen. So, I'm not gonna need you to make a check to see if you can figure out what happened to your sister. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, Ch- Charisse didn't, or Reza didn't hide that. She's like, Nick, you want some? It's fey yeah. flavored, but, and... but you didn't you didn't do it in front of Vern, as I recall. You went off into yeah. a side room. You went off to like across the room at least. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, let's call this wits occult. I think I'm fairly decent at that. So one wits occult check, please, to see if you can figure out. What has happened to your sister? Either that, or you're just discovering some new and interesting things about your sister's preferences and romantic partners. That's two successes. <laughs> I'm not as good at that as I hoped I was. <laughs> With two successes, I'm going to say... You think you're finding out new things about your sister tonight. <laughs> you're not... I, I just said you've needed at least three successes in order to actually identify... Nope, nope. 
my sister's not just thirsting, she's been bonded. No, as far as you're concerned, um, yeah, yeah. She's just into this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, some people go for the for the buttoned up to the chin librarian look, and some people like the hair down, button down, um, unbuttoned to the belly button librarian look. <laughs> In real life, you now know which one your sister prefers. Evidently. Now, out of curiosity, Riza. While you're able to be ambulatory for the first time in a while, oh, feels so good, so very good. And you are in the city of lights, the city of love, the city of eager victims. Do you want to go out for a stroll or do you want to drag them back? I mean, there is business to do, but it's been so long. I mean, I had a little bit of fun in the bar. So... And I mean, what could be more fun than destroying an enemy of my own clan? Except, um, uh, except mobilizing uh, these two young and impressionable people into doing it for me. Because I probably won't be awake by that point. Mm. <laughs> you could always attempt to keep... Uh... Sharice in line while you strut about a little bit longer. Um, I mean, according to my notes, she's got some fancy occult book to read tomorrow, so... Or else the mages get all cranky. Definitely curious about re-meeting Miss, uh... Monsieur Toussaint, but... Oh, dear. <laughs> all right. He well will be done. extraordinarily confused, but I'm sure he's met Malkavians before. Uh, he he has uh, slept with a few of them too, so. Well, I mean, <clears> he <throat> hasn't. It's Paris. It is Paris. I mean, what else is the point of Paris, if not to try everything at least once? Start a revolution. A lot of Bruja like doing that every couple of uh, every couple of centuries. I think I'm with the Bruja on this one. Well, I mean, not often enough if this is the problem when we have to deal with pretending he's all nouveau riche like it's a good thing. Not all Bruja are the same, unfortunately. This so, yes, one sure you all, ain't. You all eventually make your way back to one of the more luxurious and slightly public havens, let's call it, because, you know, anyone can pay to stay here so long as they have the money or the boon or are willing to be indebted enough to be pampered by uh, a facility staffed entirely by ghouls that have no objection doing more or less anything for the client's safety and satisfaction. As we learned last episode when one of our players just did a, a straight up murder. That was two episodes ago, two, let's two episodes be fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, last episode Water. was when they had to clean up the not murder the inconvenient non-murder. In, in, in Isabel's defense, she was very she was very hungover, and also apparently doesn't understand the proper lingo for what's a snack and what's a meal. But she was really <laughs> she had a weird day. <laughs> it's... Incidentally, the day's menu changed Sorry, at the know. restaurant on the first floor of the bar. A lot of pork dishes were added recently. Hmm, strange. That's horrifying. Okay, carry on. Oh. Me <laughs> No, no, no. The body was sold to the Nagaraja. Anyway. Wait, I believe that was the bloodline that needed to eat the meat anyway. No, that's the Dunsurns. Well, sometimes. Oh, the Dunsurns. Thank you. Sometimes it's the Dunsurns. I had that backwards. Thank you. In any event, uh, which room were you all heading to to have your private conversations before you went upstairs to meet Monsieur Gallison Toussaint? Um, so did either one of you have a conspiracy board up already? I did, if I recall. Uh, let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you were all brought upstairs to the makeshift crime board where they attempted to plot a scheme with 
less information than one would normally try to build a scheme board with, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Vern, you lead in Riza and Riza's doughy-eyed uh, bit of uh, arm candy. <laughs> All right, so... I'm sorry, Isabel, it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now, is this to to build up funds so that Isabella can hire mercenaries in Vienna, or is this just for funsies? Can things not be both? They I was in it for fun. All right, all right. And, and the guise of earning the favor of Garrison Toussaint, and by extension, the rest of the Disabla clan. Exactly. And also, exactly, a, a lot a lot to gain, and a lot of fun to be had. Well, the Disablers are nothing if not fun. Um, hmm. Do you know what, what form he keeps his wealth in? Is it property? Is it bonds? Is it gold bullion? Is it hmm. antique pirate treasure mm -hmm. chest? What was I told with regards to that, exactly? Um, I, I you? Believe, I believe it, the I, I believe the assumption was that it was most of it was like in like actual muck cash in his house, right? No one said in anything his... about what his wealth was. I don't think anybody. This is no, why I no, pointedly no. asked in character. No, no one said because no one's entirely sure what he has liquid at any given time. Yeah, the the man the, the man seems to keep uh, the man seems to keep people guessing. He clearly has. A large source of funds, else he wouldn't be able to buy his way into into this uh, his status. But hmm. he also has a hidden cache somewhere, but no one knows where it is. That's sort of the problem here. I figure that if we can find the cache, then that's that, then that's gonna uh, that'll make our job a lot easier. And uh, the the objective is to humiliate, not necessarily to um, shuffle off this immortal coil. The objective, yeah, the, yeah. Obje the objective is essentially to make him no longer a problem. From what from what I can tell, uh, killing was not off the table, but it wasn't well, an explicit, um, but it wasn't an explicit thing we wanted to do either. Aside from burning down a Malkavian haven, um, in what way is he a problem to everyone aside from the Malkavians? Is he? interfering with local business? Is he just throwing political raid around to get away with uh, problematic behavior like burning down havens? Because if we destroy his liquid assets, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, he doesn't have enough boons on somebody to keep getting away with actual murder. So I believe he's causing problems with the uh, trade between cities. Mm -hmm. Uh, which cities? I did not write that bit down. I, or necessarily ask. You did not ask. I feel like, yeah. What, what, what we do know is that both the Sablas don't like him and the Nosferatu don't like him. <laughs> they think he, he, he's apparently a, he's apparently just an obnoxious jerk to the Nosferatu, and he's messing with the Sablas' business in some way that mm -hmm. throwing his own money around to try to, like, muscle his way in would be my guess here. Well, the Nosferatu are excellent judges of character, in my experience. So, um, have, uh, Vern, have you talked to any of you, any local friends about this problem person? I have not yet, and I have a feeling they have other concerns right now. <laughs> which, which ones are those? Uh, should we... Oh, wait, did they blurb that last week? To Sharice, yes. but not to, uh, uh, but not to Rizzo. All right. What? Uh, oh wait, no. I'm considering you a close friend. Um. So I guess I have to tell you, don't I? Yes. Yes, uh, you would. Oh, yes, that's right. I'm. Oh. Uh. They told. They said not to like. Uh. Spread this any further. So un unless Vern stops Isabel, she is going. I'm just to gonna give you a look. Like, okay, really. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's it's basically trust, reminding Sharice. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Can, we can trust her, and so, I, and Sharice already Charisse already knows. I and, can't do the full computation unless I have all the variables. 
Exactly. Yes, that. Um, yes, there's rumors of only rumors thus far of some hunters that have made. <laughs> she, she, she like like lowers her voice to a whisper to try to like not be overheard if she can. There's uh, some rumors of hunt. There's rumors of. And then she smells, and she smells uh, the pure perfume, and is immediately distracted. But <laughs> uh, there are some rumors of hunters that have been that have, that have started to make some, that have started to at least go underground, and are starting to potentially make some trouble for the Nosferatu. There are yeah. some disappearances that are potentially linked to them. However, it's not cer- it's not certain, and the Nosferatu do not want. And the uh, Nosferatu I talked to. Do you remember his name? I don't remember if he actually introduced himself. Did, did Vern ever introduce He didn't introduce him? himself to you. Okay. Hmm. The, gen- the gentleman I talked to uh, said said basically that they weren't certain yet, and they didn't want to make trouble unless they had... They wouldn't, didn't want to make this a problem for anyone besides the Nosferatu unless they had to. Especially considering uh, there's a Bruja going around burning down Malkavian Haven, so why wouldn't he pop off a couple Nos if he had the had the inclination, but was there any awesome. indication awesome. of hunters before the disappearances? Before the disappearances? They knew they were in the city and never yeah. saw them leave. How did they know they were hunters unless they'd killed someone? I, my guess is they... My guess is um, you start to recognize a certain set of equipment people bring here. Uh, less less guns than you might expect. More, uh, More weapons that are more effective than that. Well, I mean, I've lived in cities where every primogen was granted a in, an intricately carved and bejeweled stake as a sign of their status. It's not difficult that's to carry. Rather, that's rather morbid. Camarillo is an interesting organization, and every prince runs their city with a different set of hubris. <laughs> I almost took up a collection, except I have other things to deal with. Um, hmm. Of princes or of hubris? Or of stakes? Sorry, that makes Is more Is there sense. a difference? <laughs> <clears throat> so. It's possible um, that the two are related, but I feel like. Honestly, I feel like it's. I feel like if it were, if I feel like if if it were this guy who was just muscling in on their turf, and uh, starting to like bump people off, I think they would have known about it. I think they, yes, he would have been um, garishly he, obvious. Yeah, he doesn't seem this. He, he's, he's, he's not subtle, yeah. except that he gets oh, away yeah. with it. He's the type. He's he, listen. He's a, honestly, he's like a politician more than anything. Honestly, what he reminds me of is a politician. Everyone knows he's got it. He's got. Everyone um, knows he's got a. He's got his hand in the cookie jar, but nobody can catch him with. But nobody can catch him in one of those photographs. Certainly, an American-style politician. <laughs> European, they're more subtle still. Well, some of them are royalty. It's a whole thing. Um, Mortimer. Hmm. Um, were any Malkavians killed in that attack by Mister Nouveau Riche on that haven? Or did anyone say that? I might not have been awake yet. Uh, if they did, no one told Cherie, so let me reach out here into the network and have a little cookie loaf. Oh, thank you, my love. You only heard half that conversation. Hmm. It's generally um, frowned upon to, like, try anything like that. Even low-clan vampires, you don't just kill You don't just kill people in the middle of a, sti- a broad, broad nightlight in the city. Um... High clans versus low clans, it's... Europe is depends a, who you are. Mm. I mean, there are certainly high clans that don't consider Malkavians or Nosferatu to be people, so to speak. Hmm. Rizzo, I do not agree with that, obviously. Yes, Doug? Rizzo, please make me a willpower check. Mm-mm. Oh, no. Do I need to eat someone? Uh, not yet, necessarily. Is this just rolling as many dice as I have willpower? Or... Yes. Okay. Just roll roll me one die for each point of willpower you have. Uh, is that all the willpower? My total points or not counting the ones I've spent? Not counting the ones you've spent. Just what you have available to you. Oh, okay. Do I roll a hunger dice with that? No. There are no hunger dice rolled with willpower checks. 
Of you can also not a... burn willpower to reroll willpower. Those are that's no successes, no botches, but no successes. Okay. What um, happened? Which is seems in uh, par for the course for Riza. Yes. So, uh, Riza, you are immediately overtaken by Mortimer returning to you from the uh, from the Malkavian hive mind, uh, and your mind is suddenly awash with the same images that are running through his. The, the sensations and sights of kindred burning alive in that fire. To be precise, you are currently experiencing the fear and pain of seven Malkavian kindred who are also catching glimpses of three other non-Malkavian kindred at different points in this building, all being burned alive. You are not being forced into a fear frenzy right now because there is a part of you that is aware that you're getting this technically third hand. Mortimer is basically acting as a buffer for you as he is running back screaming in the middle of a fear frenzy. Also without a body. Yes, but there's he enough of a work. there's this enough, the there's enough of a delusion mm -hmm. in that that you're not suddenly going into fear frenzy yourself. But I'm on that edge and my senses are over. Yeah, I think that's probably oh, the first oh, yeah. time you you stumble forward at this point. And you're holding yourself up with with a with the nearest table or couch or something yeah, so and you're she kind of goes <laughs> so suddenly she just goes Risa, are you okay? <laughs> All right. You good? Um Yes, that Nouveau Riche Bruja murdered seven kindred. Oh. And got so, away with it. Murder and, seems absolutely on the table now, doesn't it? That's... That, yeah, that's, that's a dangerous man we're going against, then. That's a lot of political yeah. clout, if he could get away with Al. Mm. Hmm. If we can, if we can pin G him down GM, for that. was that seven, seven kindred and three non-kindred, or three non-Malkavians? There were seven Malkavians. Seven Malkavians. There were three other kindred that could be seen from the perspective of one Malkavian or another that were also burning in there. Oh, it's I'm just sorry. that those three were not Malkavians. Not only that, seven Malkavians, three non-Malkavians? This guy. That. Also, who's Mortimer? <laughs> oh, um. You've heard, you've heard Charisse mention Mortimer before. I think Actually, she's been very quiet. She's, she's been, been very careful to avoid. Yeah, she's, Charisse is very careful to p appear less uh, unhinged than she actually is. So, like, mm. Reza has no like, such compulsion. So, like, she's had suspicion that, like, yeah. she's sometimes talking to other people and to herself, but, like, she's deflected so far. This is the first time that it's ever been like right in front of you. Hey, Mortimer, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Oh, I feel um, like you've mentioned Mortimer before, but the six one half doesn't know the other. Moving on. Um, he's my um supernatural contact. Let's say he's not quite a ghost, but he's a bit. Oh, that like... Uh, he's um. Your brother-in-law. I mean, he's married to Cherise. Well, he's married to me. <laughs> what? I, I'm sorry. I, I'm i still, um... Rolling on seeing seven of my clan members burned to death. Right. Sorry. Yeah. That sounds I, really intense. It's... Sorry you had to... Do you... Yeah, at, at this point, um, Mortimer is, is coming down himself, and you... You, you hear the sound of ragged breathing, even though he technically doesn't need to, but it sounds like he's coming down from a panic attack. Yeah. Baby, I'm sorry I asked you for this info. I didn't realize you were going to go that far. You, you know, I, Thought you were I, just I was expecting, ask. like, one or two, like, some yeah. something I could handle. I wasn't ready for seven. And then, oh, God. Oh. There's, there's no way... Only the Malkavians are gunning for this moron. Oh. There is no way in hell. Oh. No, no one does pulls a stunt like that as their only stunt, shall we say. Oh. Oh. 
on back. And there were so many mortals in there, too. Oh. Oh, God, there were so many mortals. Oh. What? Oh, God. She, so Sariza is trying to, is, doesn't want to focus on this vision, but did any of the people in Fl Flambe, uh, look like they could have been Nosferatu before they were set on fire? Mm -hmm. Like maybe two of them. No. If anything, the fire you saw took place before the disappearances. Okay. Okay. But also otherwise didn't look like Nos. No. Not... The, you didn't see any of, like, the signature talons or ears or uh, deformed noses or chins or, or altered head shapes that one might associate with a Nosferatu. Mm -hmm. Or cats. Cats? No, no cats were harmed in the burning of this building. Just, this is a uh, relief, at least. Just seven Malkavians, three kindred of indeterminate clan, and about 15 mortals. Hmm. Though that's information you could find out if you looked up the newspaper. No, well, newspaper. The, well <laughs> to, to cover the fire. Fire like that was going to get covered by local news, and bodies were pulled from it and yeah. the numbers would have been closer to 25 people yeah. but several of them just turned straight to ash so, so and just charred is, bone yeah 25 mortals and 10 and 10 kindred if 15 mortals and 10 kindred but the local mortal newspapers would say about 25 bodies because right. they don't know the kindred were there in that case it's yeah. probably pretty young kindred because otherwise they would have just been ash. Oh, well, that's that's a bit more morose than I was planning on being tonight. But all right, um, this asshole's going down. Yeah, oh. we, we. And it would be highly that. unlikely that there are not already people orchestrating his downfall. So Indeed. we should be careful not to get in anyone else's way. Indeed. Unless he is so stupidly connected that he can honestly get away with outright murder which i'm 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 i understand you know it's paris it's laissez-faire but murder is still not allowed well murder of kindred is still not allowed final death without prince is approval this is getting complicated but i think we're all on the same page yeah listen like Food is different. Also, this isn't a man who's afraid of murder, so... Yeah, I mean, so let's try to... Let's try to not directly get in his way, if we can help it. Uh, so, yeah, so, what if we don't get directly in his way at all, and... set up those supposed hunters to hunt him? I feel like you might be... Pl it's possible. That's playing with two kinds of fire at the same time. They don't... If you have... A fire in each hand, they don't cancel each other out. I'm not saying no. It's not, this isn't a hard line, no. But, what, how much do you know about hunters, sweetie? Very little at the moment. There are, uh... I will say, I feel like if anybody catches wind of us talking to the, and also, we're gonna have to cover our tracks pretty damn well, because I'm pretty sure that, uh, I'm pretty sure that if, uh, your Nos friends or the uh, or, or or Monsieur Toussaint finds out about us like consorting with these, you know, hunters, we'd be fucking let me let me let me be frank. We would have much more to fear from them than we than we would from from any of the hunters yeah, at that I mean, point. There's definitely been kindred rumored to mobilize human hunters against us for their own ends, but um, those tend to be people with a lot of political clout that oh, we yeah. do not have period let alone in ba in paris or at least i don't fair point yeah plus you know there's that whole you know masquerade thing that's a tradition that said i would be um 
Vern, do you have a sense of, of whether or not the Malkavians and Nosferatu have their usual camaraderie in Paris as they do in, well, everywhere else? I do not I, know. I know they're definitely looking for their own people right now, as they should be, but, um... I would be very, I would be very, very surprised if they weren't already in the know about some of this, possibly even more than Malkavians. Because, hmm. as you can tell, for Malkavians to look into it using our typical methods, uh, causes shared trauma. Nosferatu have some more mundane but highly effective methods of gathering information. Mostly being invisible. And fast. And fast. Very Nothing like being in places you aren't supposed to be. But if no one saw you, were you there in the first place? Exactly. Yeah, I would be very surprised if he's pissed off the um, De Sablas, killed seven Malkavians, killed three non malkavians and non nosferatu i mean even the high clans have a lot of more patience for all the other low clans so what is that who are the low clans again gm low clan it kind of depends on your point of view i know high clans are like von true toreador von true <laughs> toreador let's do our there are some that see the Shemise as a high clan, and there are some that see the Shemise as a low clan. There are some that see the Bruja as a high clan, there are some that see the Bruja as a low clan. There are some that see the Tremere as mm. the, the Tremere, but the fact that they can boil your blood inside your veins means uh, high, clan. Them as high, high clan. High clan. High clan. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Tremere is what I was forgetting. So that yeah. leaves the gang girl, the Ravnos, uh, Bruja sometimes. Sometimes Bruja. It depends how the uh, Bruja compose themselves. Yeah. It also I imagine it also I imagine depends on like place. You get a lot yes. more I imagine like Europe has a mm. lot more tradi Europe and especially North Africa has a lot more like like more like high clan type Bruja than America does, for instance. It really depends on where you're looking and again what in the traditions you define as high clan by low clan. Yeah. Because some of these areas, if the kindred have been around long enough anyone who settles their debates by just talking it out and politically tearing down their opponent no you're a fucking low clan don't don't drag this shit out into the chest grip rip there the problem is solved this is how you stay a high clan mm -hmm. because some of these kindred have been around to a point where it was literally kill or be killed see this is why the Vontra, I, I, you, try to, you try to do this to a and it's just like Fucking, what are you doing? You're not, it's not working. It doesn't it, work. It depends. <laughs> you, again, you have two different types of Ventru, depending upon the society. You have the Ventru that run on on presence and dominate. Yes. And are very much the social creatures. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Ventru that are the warrior kings. And they don't just ride the coattails of that. They literally were warriors who yes. took the lead. They beheaded their enemies. Mm -hmm. They strung up their enemies. They didn't let others do their dirty work unless they were leading the others to do their dirty work. Mm -hmm. um, it's yep, yep. I just realized the Les, depending on the city, the La Sombra could also be a high clan. Yeah, La Sombra, La Sombra for the most part are seen as high clans. There's not many among the Camarilla. But they're treated as high clans. They are definitely yeah. high clans in the Sabbat. They've definitely yep. de de decided uh, better to rule in hell. Yeah. They're basically and the alignment of all that. Of the <laughs> and all of the independents are usually considered low clans, right? Yeah. Ravnos, As Ravnos uh, Bon Hakim, and, uh, and Giovanni most of the time. Again, it really depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. Like, some, some people still fondly remember the Cappadocians, the handful of them that are still running around, literally the handful of them that are still running around as far as the Camarilla is concerned. Five. The Cappadocians are considered high clans. Mm -hmm. The Giovanni city by city basis. Mm -hmm. it, it really depends on how they conduct themselves and how the rest of the court sees them and treats them. 
because if you're a big enough of value to the other high clans, they'll treat you like high clan, especially if most of you, especially if you've scared them enough with your ability to conjure the dead and make them scream and give you information. You see, the Cappadocians didn't do that shit. The Cappadocians were a lot more pleasant with the dead, and they were just more pleasant than the Giovanni. They were more pleasant. <laughs> Many things more pleasant than the Giovanni and what they do with the dead. Yeah. I mean, there are other users of necromancy that are more disturbing than the Giovanni, um, but yes. the Giovanni are in larger number and are therefore the real stick by which depravity of necromancy is measured. Yes. Also, I feel like if they got more depraved, it would probably, like, they would be harder to do business with. Hmm. Yeah. Well, They're already when you start enough. going more depraved, that's how you become the Keepers of the Skulls, which are the Cappadocians that signed up with the Sabbat. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's because their whole thing is, we're gonna murder all the Giovanni. You mean the Harbingers of Skulls? Harbingers of Skulls, you're right. Harbingers of Skulls, not Keeper of Skulls. Keepers of the Skulls sounds really cool, though. And then there's like the Samity... Anyway, anyway, Paris... The Samity is another necromancy-using clan, but they spawned out of the Giovanni, not the Cappadocians. Oh, really? Okay, anyway, yeah. anyway. Paris, huh. 1920s. Yes. We have a Bruja to... Mur to so yes, Murder. It seems like there are some gaps in the information that Vernon and Isabella are bringing to you, which you mm. might be able to get by speaking to others well, yourselves mean... or sending them to discuss. Vernon and I just... Isabella are 12 years old. So... <laughs> that no. part, Shereza isn't saying out loud, but it's like, yeah, the ch yes, children. Okay. Yeah. Other mother is here. Go Fun on. mom. When you put it like that... <laughs> that makes... Okay. That's... There's... 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 Just... Darren mom, it's... and then there's Fun mom. One tells you you need to eat your broccoli. The other one brings you pizza and chocolate bars. And murder. <laughs> yes, murder. murder. So, I mean, to be fair, I feel like, given how this guy is a, like, you know, I only know, like, a couple Bruja, but, like, the one I know could probably kill all three of us if he was if he were so inclined. We oh, I've, I've met Bruja like that. I've, I mean, we're immortal. Anyone can learn to be an effective killing machine given time and focus. Even Certainly. some Malkavians. Certainly, and I'm more uh, more than people would be willing to admit. But that's not. But we the, don't talk about it. That's exactly. That's why. not the. Uh, <laughs> but that's not the point. The main the main point is the. Uh... So really, we just have to figure out which angle we're going with this, mm -hmm. without stepping on the toes of whoever else is inevitably gunning for this horrible person. Mm -hmm. Since he's pissed off the Disablers the Malkavians, probably the Nosferatu as well, and whoever those three other kindred were in that in in that burning building. Unless they... It's just... It, it, the question now in my mind is... Did he do that for fun, or did he do that on someone's behalf? Well, or on his own behalf, with these people that were in his way, or had... was Were these people that had slatted him or were they in the way of something he wanted or wanted to do i think regardless of, i think i think we're, we're getting a little too much into speculation here i think yeah. well, the, the thing is, we, fire. it's not that we're getting too much into speculation it's that we have barely any information all right we need to figure out how to get some and that is a problem <laughs> yes we need to figure out uh who to talk to um so you already talked to mr toussaint and i assume he he told you everything he knew about this asshole he didn't he, tell us he told us everything we asked for and we probably did not ask for everything we needed oh so i guess yeah. we should go talk to him again before we catch up with your nice yeah. friends no to be fair we don't know that this fire is like common knowledge outside the uh outside the uh the the malkavians but oh, i feel like um, it's strange that it, if it made it into mortal News yes, cycles but... than it is public knowledge among the kindred. They may yeah. not talk about it, but everyone yes. knows. And if we can figure out why they're not talking about it, that might give us an answer. And that, well, that's what the the bartender at the Dusty Spade said was, um, everyone knows he did it, but he cleaned up his trail, so no one can pin it on him. For a ten... And it is extraordinarily difficult to wash one's hands of the final death of 
the unapproved final death of Ten Kindred, unless he did have permission and, like you said, was doing it on someone else's behalf. But I don't know. The prince of the of Paris doesn't sound like that much of a badass to me. You know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if, if the prince did it at his behest, that would be the easiest course of action would just be to seduce the prince. I mean, it, it's pretty much what he wants, really. Yes. So. I could. Oh, no, sweetie. Honestly, uh, no. if, if two of the three you walked in there and said, hello, we'd like to fuck the prince, so you'd go, get in line. Oh, there's a hole in line. <laughs> Come right on in. Uh, no offense intended, Vern, but he's one of the he's a bit more of a stuck up Toreador when it comes to his to his sexual partners. But um yeah, no. It's fine. He's... Vern doesn't want to fuck anyone anyway. <laughs> At least not he's, um, that way. It, um I mean if Actually no, metaphorically, maybe. Fuck them up with claws to their eyes. Was, you know, that? in a combat sort of way. Well, that's for business. There's but, nothing uh, yeah. sexual here. <laughs> Monsieur, Monsieur Toussaint, well, if, 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 it, if it works, then it works. Monsieur, T Monsieur Toussaint says it might not be the most fun uh, encounter in the world, but... Oh, with the prince, or with... With the prince. Oh, oh. Yeah, he, he did mention that at one point, remember? That? Ooh, <laughs> well, I could certainly teach that's... the prince a few things, but that's neither here nor there. Oh. Well, actually, I mean, I'm sure plenty of people have tried to teach him. If he I hasn't learned by now, I mean, there's not much hope. Me, I've, believe me, I know. Believe me, I, I think I've met quite a few men like that who think they are, r r so you know, the type the type of people who have a lot of power and think they that they mistake privilege is. for skill. Exactly. Then again, <clears throat> then again, he's also the Prince of Paris, so he might have skill in like other matters that he, but he just might think he has skill. He just might think his skills spill over in places that they don't. I have to wonder who's actually in charge in Paris. Because this there... doesn't sound like, um... In my experience, men who don't realize they're awful in bed are not very effective leaders of cities. So now I'm wondering, he's wearing the, bull sh the bullseye sweater for someone else. But that's... <laughs> well, hopefully we don't find that out the hard way. But um, I think maybe we should go talk to Mr. Toussaint again. Yeah, let's start from there. Oh, All right. I really yeah. hope this yeah. doesn't uh, make him think twice about letting me have access to those books. <laughs> but, eh. I mean, he's he's met Malkavians before. Yep. This can't be that much of a shock. We'll see. So the three of you head down into the elevator, request the trip to the 13th floor. Uh, you head up and are unsurprisingly greeted by a familiar Nosferatu individual whose eyes glance over to you very quickly, Vern, and make eye contact before going and go, before turning to all of you and addressing, is Monsieur Toussaint expecting you? I'm afraid he isn't. Uh, but my little friends have told me of something that he proposed to them that they did not they did not investigate thoroughly hello I'm Riza. I think this is the second time we're meeting for the first time uh, welcome to clan Malkavian oh no oh, <laughs> right um, um, a moment I will see if he's uh, available and he Thank you. Heads his way towards the uh, towards the large office doors. Uh, he opens the door and um, sticks his head in. And he goes, "We oui, we oui, even send him in. I heard through the door. Yeah, I have all specs too. It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> um. Riza understands French as well as Cherise, correct? Yeah, I don't see why okay. she wouldn't. Yeah. Well, you never know. They were embraced in New Orleans, so... Well, that doesn't mean that Riza doesn't know a different language than Cherise does, just because of her experiences. I um, like keeping the character sheet simple. <laughs> there's So there's a moment when he pulls his head back before going over to you, and he speaks something in French, which neither of you speak, so you don't get it. Riza 
you hear him go, normally he lets me finish speaking before that. So he just sort of greets the three of you over. And Wait, three of you who are... said that? Was it Anton or? Anton, when he's, when he's just standing there for a moment, he's like, <laughs> yeah. normally he doesn't cut me off like that. Hmm. And he, he waves the three of you, the three of you in. Mystery. So we looked in on some of this info, and um, okay. the, the three of you walk in through the uh, through the door. Probably was doing this before we left and, the hotel. Yeah. Okay. And he um, he stands up from behind his desk, and he goes, um, "I do not believe we've been properly introduced." No. You are I, Monsieur Toussaint, I presume. Garrison Toussaint. And am yes. I to assume that you are not as easily offended as your... I hesitate to use the wrong words. Sister. Better half. Better half. Better half. I believe that remains to be seen. <laughs> and he takes your hand and gives you a kiss mm -hmm. on the knuckles. And it's one of those, like, the lips stay there just, just that microsecond too long where it's, like, less polite and a little more if you're interested. Let's just say she's the research and I'm the application. No. Oh. I certainly uh, am interested in seeing the application of research. Please, mm. come in. Tell me what I can do for the three of you. Yes. Um... Uh, I believe my young companions asked you for um, something to do to occupy their time in Paris while I was studying. Yes, yes. I don't, uh, look, I don't legitimately expect the two or three of you to go around doing anything involving that. It's idle curiosity. It's uh, idle thought more than anything else. You do not need to trouble yourselves with it. Well, I may personally have to, if only because uh, members of my clan, as you probably know, have to look out for each other because no one else will. Um, oh, you did not know about this. He has, uh, the, what I understand is that he has attacked, he has had members of my clan attacked and gotten away he with it. He did what? Mm-hmm. I strongly doubt you are the only one gunning for this man. There. Which either means he has an ungodly amount of political sway somewhere other than his daddy. Or he's what working in the interests of that of whoever that is, because otherwise, this man cannot have only pissed off the Malkavians. Like that's just not how this works. I, 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 have there been? Why would they not come to me about this, S -S Monsieur Toussaint? Surely you heard about you know a fire that took the lives of ten kindred, the online. Oh, the... Yeah. oh Isabel, really? There was a. I uh, was reported in the mortal news uh, a month or so ago back. Um, 25 people killed. There were kindred in that? They were, they were apparently, from what garbled and traumatized sources I was able to pursue, 10 kindred. And the fact that you didn't even know there was final death involved in this incident makes me fear for pursuit of this horrible person. How did not? There's no way. The, you, you can't just kill ten kindred and then it's not simply noticed. Exactly. The, the Marcavia, why would no one have come to me with this? Do you... Well, I... Like, maybe, like, maybe like you said previously, this is our first time meeting. Do you have very good relations with, with the Malkavians in this town? I thought they did. It's possible. I'm, I'm new to this town. But, like I said, not every place is friendly for my kind. We look to our own first and see if we can fix our own problems. It's also I mean... It's also possible that they fear that they might fear greater retaliation if they were to come to you. It might not be a case of 
It might not be a case of like misplaced friendship. Hey, it could also... hey GM, I'd like to aura percept this guy and make sure he's actually surprised and not actually in on this. Oh, by the way, is it? Oh, by the Go way, is it bad that I'm like trying to like jump in here because? I mean, it's what Isabel would do. Yeah. yeah. It's Isabel's not trying... what Risa would want Isabel to do, but it's what Isabel no. would do. <laughs> well, so you should tell Isabel that she doesn't want her talking. She would probably be upset, but still do it. Talk so roll, roll me your, your aura sight. Tell also, me. What... Also, this makes it convenient. Malkavians, I didn't tell this guy. The annoying little Von True did before I could stop her. <laughs> Plausible deniability. This is how you use the youngers. Uh, what what do I roll again? <laughs> uh, I was monologuing. I'm sorry. This is so mean to us. Heightened senses, sense the unseen. Scry the soul. Scry the soul. Focus on a person to perceive the state of that person's psyche is a shifting aura of colors. You make me one rouse check, and uh, then you make me an intelligence auspects check versus his oh his composure subterfuge. Oh dear. That's yeah. That's not going to be an easy roll. But, um, uh, how, what, what is a rouse check again? Roll you one. roll me 1d10 for your generation and mm -hmm. for your blood potency. And then you tell me if you succeed or fail. If you succeed, you draw on the power of the beast with no complication. If you fail, you gain a hunger die because you rouse the beast too much. And how, that's roll one, di one dice. And just 1d10. Just 1d10. 1d10 for your rouse check. Eight. I succeed. You succeed. Okay, so that wow. just... He rolled like... Well, you know what? That would Magic make sense, complete. because he has genuinely lost his composure at this point. Awesome. Uh, okay, so intelligence plus auspex? Yes. And no no additional hunger die, because I already did a rouse check? Just whatever hunger die you already have. Oh, but okay. I believe you... Did you drain him dry? No, no, I don't do murders. I'm okay, old so enough to know your, not to do more murders. Then you're just your one hunger die that you should have that. Okay. That would replace one of the uh, the die of the intelligence aspects check. Okay, and it's just int aspects, no skill dots. No. Okay. Not for Scry the Soul. Uh, one, two, three, five successes. Okay. That beats his three. So you wind up getting two pieces of information on him. Uh, as to his emotional state, which certainly seems to be one of the things you are looking for. Uh, genuine he, what the fuck? He is genuinely... His, his aura is all over the place. He's... He's frightened. He's saddened. He's angry. He's confused. He's... You've never seen this many negative colors ripple through a kindred before when they seem to be worried about another kindred that isn't even of their clan. His aura is all over the place. Um, blood resonance is probably not information you need. You already know he's a vampire. Um, ultimately, what I, what I wanted... So I can see, like, he's all over the place emotionally. Is that because he just found out, or is that because... We've just found him out. Mm. I don't know if, if I if this works specifically enough for me to see uh, complicit or yeah. No, like if you had scored a critical success, mm. Mm. like like a a significant staggering best of this skill, then you might have been able to eat something like that out, but no. At this point, you just see this wash of emotions. Um, if you want to attempt an insight check on him. Okay, would I get any bonuses good. from... I'm also good at that. I've got a six dice in that. Well, do you have reason to doubt the genuineness of his emotions at this moment? The, yeah, the way he reason no reason. is? Absolutely yeah. no reason to. Okay, uh, so what would that roll be? This would be wit's insight. Okay. Do I get any bonuses for having scryed his soul? Yeah. What's your all specs rating? So I did get five success. I don't know what a crit su success is, though. I don't remember. It it would have involved a significantly larger um, oh, that's right, difference. He got in three, so I yeah. got two more than him. It, okay. it would have required a lot more successes to qualify for that past a, a, a difference of two. Okay. 
But what's your auspex rating? Uh, three. Three? Okay, so we'll call that just one straight bonus success in your oh, favor okay. on your on your insight check. Awesome. So make me wits insight and then just add one to your number of successes. Okay. And he's I'm gonna... he's not attempting to hide anything at this point. He's he's not thinking about trying to, to compose himself at this point. Okay. He's, he's... I will also use a plus one from the pool. So okay, so you'll add one die to that. One success. So, oh well. <laughs> that's in addition to the one you got off of your auspex, or? Well, we, uh, so that's one. Oh no, uh, yeah, so so that's two successes. Okay. I mean, again, he's, at this point, he's not focusing on maintaining his composure. So with two successes, it looks like he's genuinely bothered to find out that Malkavians were injured and killed, and that literally the Malkavian community, for whatever reason, didn't feel compelled to come to him for help. And mm. he, like, based on everything you knew, he disliked this individual for having caused him grief on a business end. This is something else and is actively making him very angry. Mm -hmm. But that's also getting sort of mixed in with depression and fear and sadness and he is not a happy man there is no positive emotion running through here right now hmm. it's possible that they fear that if they come out with it well it sounds like he's apparently washed his cleaned his uh, cleared up his trail so effectively that no one's been able to pursue this, but yes, I'm surprised that no one knew this happened. You, you can't just remove ten kindred from the city. Our population's not that great. It's not like ten mortals disappear from the city of Kali, and no one notices. We're ten kindred. There's less than you... fifty of us in the city. So you, you heard about... Wipe out a fifth of our population? Unless someone's unless someone's deliberately trying to keep it quiet for whatever reason. Well, it might be the Malkavians themselves just to avoid further destruction. But when a when a kindred uh, enacts the rite of destruction without the approval of the prince, uh, it's your ass, so to speak. I have, I have to wonder. So this might he... this, this might be a little conspiracy theory theory ish, but I wonder if it, but I wonder if with this kind of but if if this kind of thing happens with nobody asking, I wonder if he's just the I wonder if this guy's just the weapon, and I wonder if and I wonder if there's someone bigger out there who's trying to who's trying to make some kind of power play. I mean, if he is, I'm going to take him and pistol whip who is responsible using Thiro's own body. Okay. The three of you do not need to get involved. I thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'm going to make some calls. And hopefully, by the next time you return to Pali, there's going to be one fewer Bruha in the city. Mm. Though you might find pieces of him in every nook and cranny. Just go carefully, Monsieur Toussaint. Like Isabel said, someone's covering this up. Like, I, I didn't realize no one in Paris had heard about this. I just assumed they'd blame so, something like the Sabbat or whatever. I mean, I'm from the United States. We blame the Sabbat for everything. We do. So do we. In fairness, sometimes, in fairness, very often it is their fault. Hey, but yeah. not as often as you would think. Is this also true? He, he takes a seat and he starts nervously working his hands. I I inherited this position mm -hmm. from a previous member of the Disablers who was a favorite child of the head of our order. He left for me a perfect organization to oversee. All I had to do was keep 
smiling, being kind, and maintaining all of the goodwill that he has maintained. And I have done this. I, at least I thought I had. When I was here, working under him, learning from him, when just about whenever anyone had a problem, they came to him. They treated him like a keeper of Elysium, even though he did not technically hold that position here. Because he could handle things so long as it didn't involve kindred above a certain station. Mm -hmm. He had enough connection and positive reception among most of the clans that he could keep things in line. Mm. In retrospect, that's what's allowed the prince to give further into his depravities. Um, if I may I... ask a very dangerous question. Is the prince, is it, is the prince really the prince that rules Paris? I mean, yes, but up until you're telling me this now, there has not been a reason for him to actively have to do anything vaguely prince-ish in, well, not since the end of the Great War. That was the first time he needed to really tighten his belt and actually do things because, you know, the city was partially in flame and we were losing mortals left and right and enemy agents coming in and it was it was a problem. But so long as there wasn't a major problem, he didn't really need to do anything. The city practically ran itself. The primogens did their thing. Those of us that had any amount of actual social responsibility did our things, and we managed to keep things running. The we kept things The good. comfortable privilege of the older Camarilla cities is everything uh, just sort of runs like a clockwork without having to do much maneuvering or damage control. Uh, I mean, everyone's uh, working in their own best interest, which is make things. And then when be those best easy. interests come into conflict, the Keeper of Elysium handles things. Or in some cases, people like us. People trust us because the desablas are always concerned with cities working mm. well. Yeah. Because if they're working well, Good for everyone business. benefits. If the desablas have any kind of unifying philosophy, it's what's good for business. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. I've never met a member of the desabla organization before, some? but my understanding is that... Um, Y'all would rather uh, benefit from peace than walk into the arms dealership. Mm -hmm. That did not seem to be their style. Um, apparently there was a period before I became a kindred where that was sort of a thing, but that's before the hospitality industry was mm. really sort of a thing. But, you know... More money to be made this way than there was. Than there was. Oh, yes. No, there was absolutely... You can make a fortune during wartime, but you can make disgusting amounts of money in peacetime. Well, because dead people, well, properly dead people can't spend money on luxury. Mm-hmm. That's but, cool. Hmm. And as you work on making it easier for people of certain socioeconomic stations to be less concerned about choosing between a roof over their head or food in their stomach, they're more inclined to spend their free money as well. Indeed. There is one other aspect of this that uh, is worrisome, and I would recommend you tread carefully. If, what if the Malkavians themselves are covering it up? Again, if, I see the reason well, the why this is, uh, I mean, if this is a power play, like, do the Malkavians have any kind of political clout here? Because that would be highly un. Boston is a unicorn of of the planet Earth. Like, Malkavian princes do not last that long unless they are amazing. Like, Malka like my clan, we're, we're more often than not a low clan. We don't have a lot of outright political clout. I mean, the Malkavian primogen more or less keeps everything on their end in line. I mean, they don't yeah actively pick fights with anyone i mean she's she's a pretty phenomenal representation of a primogen to be honest i mean region. we have to be or no one trusts us or, or no one trusts us to get anything done basically well it it also helps that she 
at least according to rumors, is able to read the minds of those around her, so she always gives sly smiles to make people think that she knows their dirty secrets. You'd be surprised how much you, you'd be surprised how much people will jump into conclusions when you do things like that. Yeah, except for the fact that I know that she actually can. Certainly, but like Family for everyone secret. else, it's a rumor. In my case, it's it's a fact. Ooh. Fair enough. Uh, because I saw her do it. Oh damn. Yeah. I wonder if she let you see it on purpose, and to what purpose. Uh, oh no! But my predecessor made sure that I saw it and knew it. Uh, he made sure I understood a lot, uh, especially if I was going. What it happened to him anyway? Why is he? Why is he no longer in this position? It sounds like a pretty darn cushy job. Adventure. Uh, at at this point, he uh, he's actually in Alsace, uh, revisiting uh, ancestral territory and is um, looking to expand into private wineries owned by us. He's uh, actually us. managed to he's I actually managed that. to recently acquire uh, some some land through uh, business transactions, one of which was apparently uh, <laughs> the land that he used to preside over before someone tried to kill him. I'm just surprised that there's like land left in Alsace that isn't a minefield at this point. It's been hard. To, to get that to get that fixed it, it has been but he is he's determined to to turn it back into a, a the beautiful place he remembers mm -hmm. from hundreds and fifty or so some odd years ago and try to um, I think he's also trying to bury the, the bad memories uh, but that's that's his story to tell not mine your home your home getting caught in the middle of well the great war sounds well, not a great time. He built the That's industry. also what actually made it easier for him to acquire some of that land. Mm. Yeah. So he built the um, the organization and the business and the empire, and now he gets to work on his passion project. Mm, I mean, to be fair, this was originally set up by our founder, who also happens to be from this particular corner of Europe originally. Um, she left someone else in charge and moved on to do another thing and another thing. Eventually, my predecessor was running things here for a while, and then it fell to me as others were moved on to another project or another project. The fact that he's not moving on to orchestrate another city as part of a larger endeavor is probably because he's one of, one of our master's favorites. I mean, he's... Look, the fact is, is that Part of the reason that we are all trained to accept that even though it's very rare for kindred to want to eat or drink actual food is because our founder does. And across her 60 some odd children over the course of her life, Goodness. only one has ever shared that gift with her. Um. So he kind of became favorite pretty quick, Makes which sense. really pissed off her old favorite. Oh, family politics. Anyway, There's a little bit of bad blood there. Anyway, um, back to local politics. So, yes, yes, sorry. I um, think I was trying to distract myself from all of this nightmare. Yes, oh, it was a nightmare. Um, I think so. First off- Do you have evidence? Do you have evidence that no. he killed 10 kindred? I have a vision. Through that vision, I was able to... Yeah, a Mulcavian's vision isn't going to stand up in most courts, even if a Mulcavian is prince. But um, what I do know is that seven of the victims were Mulcavians, and three were not. But I do not know what clan they were part of. Or if they were... Honestly, it's possible none of these people were recognized. I mean, I assume we haven't been to be properly acknowledged by the Prince of Paris because they don't, y'all don't do things like that. There's one possibility. There's a, there, there is another possibility. If they were Sabat, it would have been a very different vision. Not that. Not if it were Prince Sabat, he would have. No. Oh, that's no right. Yeah, he would have. I'm the hero of Paris. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. No, that's not what I was suggesting. It's possible that the reason that you didn't see ten kindred disappear from Paris is it's possible that they didn't disappear from Paris. It's possible that they disappeared from other places, and no, this is the this place was, they were brought to. This was all one place. One yeah, yeah, sure. But like, what I mean, what I mean to say is like ten people disappearing from the streets, even if it weren't. It uh, is is Isabel. Isabel looks. Isabel looks. Isabel. At everyone knows we're here. No, we have been that. here three nights. We are from the Americas. Exactly. Everyone knows we're here. If we died in a fiery building, someone would know. At least, at the very least, our host would be suspicious. Yeah. And he I'm has there. a business to maintain. No yes. one gets from city to city without major cashing in of booze yeah, or actual true. cash. That's true, that's true. So, I'm trying to figure out how the hell... How I does, mean, I know the Nosferatu have this? their own methods how, but none of these people as far as i'm aware were nosferatu how do 10 people disappear how do 10 people disappear from the streets and then 25 burned bodies emerge from a building and nobody can and, and like well nobody so, nobody who's anybody connects point a to point b the that story i've heard sense. is that he's covering his tracks very well but it's it's the, i don't know if it's him covering his own tracks which is the problem the only way that this could be done especially with such a large population from a single clan, is if those seven Malkavian were not from Bali. Precisely. And the fact that there were 10 kindred in the city that no one's accounting for, I mean, that's that's a really large coterie. And you're <sighs> right, if they were Sabat, uh, what's-his-name would have been... Uh, would have been bragging about this all over town, so... Unless they were Anox. Maybe. Even then, I mean... The don't... Camarilla has strong positive ties with the Anox right now, mostly because they hate the Sabbat. And... But in mm. that Slightly case, more than we do. aren't the Camarilla carefully tracking Anox movements? You know, keep your enemies close? Closer? I mean, unless it's Sabat, there's there's <laughs> lines you don't cross, but you know. No, when I say close, strong ties, as far as the Camarilla is concerned, that means yes, we're watching where the Anarchs go, because we want to see what Sabat they kill and which ones we have to clean up. Mm-hmm. It's possible they were Anarchs. Um, all right, so if the Malkavians aren't using him to destroy their own, which is very, very bad, um, that would be. Oh man, that's unless it was. I mean, there's three kindred of unknown origin involved in the situation. I have to wonder if finding out who those three are might might shed some light on the situation. I mean, seven Malkavian killed in a Malkavian haven that was caught on fire with three other kindred, with a population not noticeably affected. I mean, do you know? Uh, was it, it was in the papers? Do you still have a copy of that? Like, was there someone someone in the hotel still has a copy of that? Because if uh, it wasn't known to be a Malkavian ha- haven, no, why no, were there we, three other kindred in it? I know full well that there was a Malkavian haven, but there were no Malkavian reported deceased. It looked like the haven itself was attacked and several ghouls were killed, which caused a problem and a stir, but it looked like the fire was an accident, so oh. no one was really pushing it. There was talk that he was behind it, like anything else, but honestly, to be fair, he winds up getting blamed for things that he may not have actually had anything to do with because when bad fortune befalls anyone, especially someone he doesn't particularly like, it's easy to assume it was him. Mm -hmm. In that case, it's possible that someone is covering it up in in order to give him enough rope to hang himself. Make him think he got away with it and then spring some other trap. This is why I was a little bit concerned about getting involved in this, is there can't... We... This convers- this can't be the only conversation of its kind going on in Paris about this awful, awful man. No. But again, it feels weird that none of this is coming to me mm. through someone else. Through any allies I have made in any of the other clans and any of the other industries. The theory that these conversations would be having and that they wouldn't be reaching out to me, if nothing else to help them mm. cover this up yeah. concerns me greatly. Uh, 
I'm not gonna tell you how to how to walk through your own city, but tread carefully. This does not sound like a simple nouveau riche bruja anymore. No, no, it does not. No. This may be a longer game than uh, we have the resources to involve ourselves in. Maybe. No. Finland's up there, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to have ruined your evening. Well, number six. When you need help, ask for it. So I'm going to make some calls. I'm going to send some carriers. And I'm going to get some help. Would you three be willing to help me? And have... I would be willing to help, just so long as I have enough information to help with. To... to Not to having help. that is how we ended up here in the first place. Well, how we ended up in this conversation. Monsieur Susson, to have, an, to have an esteemed persona as yourself asking me for aid? Absolutely, I'll say yes. Also, your people know how to run a hotel. I want one of these in Boston, goodness gracious. Indeed. There should be someone over there constructing one now. Ooh. Sounds good. I don't know who they sent over, but I know they sent over someone. I think they sent someone over from the Berlin Bridge. Hmm. Berlin? I guess a better You, you do recall that the the member of the Disabla cartel you spoke to did have a thick German accent. I guess I better brush up on my German. Yep, yep, yep. It was a. Uh, I think it, I think it was a German man. But yes. Um, I would. I, I as a Malkavian whose clan has been viciously attacked, I am, for you, sir. I just hope that helping you doesn't put me at odds with other members of my clan who had, some kind of longer game, complicated plan going of their own. Which is the only reason the main. The, the main thing keeps coming up in my head, which is why won't why don't Malkavians ask for help? Because they think they can do it themselves. Sometimes we can, and sometimes we're delusional. To be Roll fair, that, die. to be fair, that one's not unique to the Malkavians. That seems like it. That seems like a thing with uh, a lot of clans. True, but we at least admit to it. We then own what, I it. Need, what I need from at least two of the three of you, then, anyway is to go and speak to the Malkavians and the Nosferatu, see if they will be more inclined to open up to you, since they have apparently not been willing to open up to me, even if it's a small thing. Because if I'm being cut out of this, and this is something this big, I am very concerned. Hmm. I'm also I'll concerned start reaching that... out for my own official and unofficial venues. I'm additionally concerned as if he's gotten away with this now what else could he have gotten away with leading up to now i know what he's gotten away with involving me in my business so now i wonder if he's gotten away with more than i'm aware of i'm so uh, sorry to to repay your kindness and hospitality with a lot of bad news uh, i may very well lose my position here after this if something like this has been going on in this city underneath my nose, I may very well be replaced. Oh, well then, I should do my utmost to make sure that doesn't happen. Of course. I would appreciate that. In exchange, I'm sure I can work out some sort of favor for you all. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can work something out. Absolutely. It is the way of our kinds. Kinds. Kind. And we of the Desabla always pay back our debts, usually with interest. Mm -hmm. Makes people feel better about taking out loans from us. It's just good business sense. All right. Trust is an trust is that trust is foundational. Yes, it's um, it's nearing dawn. I'm going to send mm. some Kilias messages before I have to retire myself. You three should probably go and um, prepare yourselves for rest as well. Uh, 
take your time, schedule your uh, your morning. Uh, and let me be clear on this now, uh, so that there is no further confusion. If you wish to sup lightly, you ask for a snack. If you wish to slake your hunger, you order a meal. And please, yes. by all means, finish your plate. I apo- I apologize for that. I I had a. Would you accept? I had a very weird night as an excuse. Yes, I remember how you came back to the hotel. Cool. Yes, that's. Does Sorry Isabel that. remember? <laughs> no, Isabel does not. Isabel oh. watched the walls melt and then found herself back in her room. Mm. Oh, it was quite a full service. Uh, quite a, quite a full contact will... service you have. I'll keep that in not... mind. Yes, I will try not to embarrass myself and you uh, in the future, so, such as that. I apologize for losing my composure. You have nothing to you have nothing to apologize for. This is a this is a lot. <laughs> oh, I have a lot to apologize for because if I'd been doing my job well, you wouldn't be dealing with this. You wouldn't have even heard of it because it wouldn't be a thing. I don't know. Isn't it the 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 whole American stereotype is that we just show up and cause trouble? Hey, I have a feeling this was destined. Problem. Something like this was destined. Show up, cause trouble, show up, drink, show up, trying to get your hands on every umbel femme you can get your hands on. Yes, I remember American troops here during the the end of the Great War and the middle of the Great War. Yes, I, I don't want anything like that, and I certainly don't want something like that started by Kindred now. Uh, well, ho- hopefully, well, hopefully that, ho- hopefully that no one's going to be foolish enough to start this co- this level of com- this level of conflict ever again. I mean, who would? The humans, the... kindred, mages, wolves. Certainly, but like, where is the profit in like something as insane as that? Xenophobia. Mm. Uh, keys to a greater understanding of the beast. Mages talk about a thing called ascension. Um, wiping out all uh, all kindred because that's just what wolves do. Mm-hmm. Um, a sabat who somehow l- managed to play the long game. And antediluvian because oh. antediluvians is also what they do. Oh. Um, that's above demons my because well, who the hell knows what goes through a demon's head? No, I, I'm. No, well, I'm still over, I'm still under the hope that like any kind of that kind of for, for your on your on your behalf as well as my own that that level of that level of insanity doesn't come over anyone anytime soon. Excuse me, I'll take offense at that remark. Oh, I'm sorry. Phrasing, darling. I I am so sorry. That is not you're messing with me, aren't you? How would you know, youngin? Well, the fact that after I started apologizing, you started giggling. True. Should we perhaps call it a night? I think we should. Do. I think we do. Yes, I have some work I need to do, and you may very well see some guests showing up here in the next few days. Oh. They may wish to speak with you. Of course. I will try to keep your uh, availability in mind as I have asked you to do a thing, but also please bear in mind that some of them have. Uh, very little patience, and they need information you may have in order to do the jobs I'm hiring them for, or to help deal with the problem I'm calling them about. Right. Duly uh, noted. We'll, we'll make sure to we'll make sure to fill in uh, Charisse if if you uh, wake up uh, as as her again. Well, I can take notes too. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, let's. I take it Charisse still has some reading to do tomorrow. So certainly, but I can't. I, let her do that undistracted, and then you know, tag me in. I'm sure you'll figure I can, out how. I can excuse. I can tell them. That, I can tell my associates that something has come up and try to arrange something. If nothing else, having them go back earlier and putting the books away before someone notices will put them more at ease. As it is, they feel really uncomfortable being here at the moment. Might get more uncomfortable. All right. All right. And you all head back to your rooms as the bell rings. Which is actually relatively good timing. 
That's a very good time. That was fun. That was some vampire ass vampire politics we just did there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, chat, this is where we take a 10 minute break. Or a 10 second break if you're watching via VOD because I edit those out. Um, so, yeah, chat, go, uh, go get yourself some ramen or a drink or a snack or something. And uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes for more uh, more vampire roleplay shenanigans, which are my favorite kind. Oh, as we see what happens when Sharice wakes up in the morning and is like, wait, what happens? What? It'll be fun. What? It'll be fine. Who's Rizza? Who's Rizza? Uh, completely ignoring the two sets of handwriting in her journal. That's just, you know, it's Paris. Weird it's stuff. fine. It's fine. Everything's probably fine. Okay. Too much wine. But I, I can't drink wine. Oh, no. What did I eat? Who did I eat? How Too many? much wine in the person you ate. Mm. I mean, they did. She did go. She was the one to go to the Mulcavian bar. So. All right. Sorry. That's okay, true. chat. All right, chat, we'll see you in 10. We are back after a, after a 10 minute break. That was actually 10 minutes. It's amazing. I remembered to we set did the it, timer. Guys. Largely because I remembered to set the timer for once. Anyway. Uh, um, welcome back. This is Magic Fish Radio. Chat, I hope you've gotten your snacks and your good ramen and your drinks. Because it's probably going <laughs> to be more political paranoia from here on in. And I'm happy that I'm a lot more awake than I thought I would be tonight. Yay! But uh, yeah, this is Magic Fish Radio. We do tabletop RPG streams on Tuesdays and Saturday nights. Tonight, obviously, V5, Vampire the Masquerade, set in the 1920s. Currently, we are causing pro we are Americans causing problems in Paris, which uh, may be technically bringing them to light, but as Americans, we're, we might as well be causing them. As far as I'm concerned, those problems caused themselves. But we're <laughs> Americans, so we're gonna get blamed. And slow oh no, one of us is Avon True. You're safe. The rest of us are screwed. Um. So yeah, on Saturday nights, we alternate between NWAD in space and indie game RPG one-shot night, which someday I'll get a, be a better, shorter title for. Uh, and this week is Indie Week, so come back for that if you like watching us uh, uh, be political creatures of the night, or whatever is about to happen in the second half of game tonight, because Sharice... Cherise slash Riza definitely has trepidations about asking, talking to the Malk pr Primogen when she suspects the Malk Primogen might be in on it. <laughs> what if every, uh, what if oh. every, to be fair, we also suspect the Prince might be in on it, you suggested. Maybe. In which case, we are the very... Prince doesn't seem smart enough to do something like this, but. Is I feel not? like we... I feel okay. We're we're not we're not underestimating the Prince. He ju he does actually. Like if he's not smart enough to know that he's meh in bed he's not going to be smart enough I, to pull this off i will say this he's not meh in bed garrison is better and therefore judges him more harshly <laughs> i'm just judging based on what garrison told me <laughs> yeah, exactly Toreador he didn't life. measure up to garrison oh damn that's yeah. what it is to be a torador <laughs> indie <laughs> weeks so my character is not eden <laughs> we'll hashtag not eden my calendar is very small. What can I say? Anywho, um, so yeah, uh, I wake up the next evening as a confused British woman. Oh, button everything back up. <laughs> well, while you're buttoning yourselves back up, you all come wake. Vern, our, uh, Isabel, did you place your orders in for breakfast the night before, or are you ordering down... Oh, actually, you all need to make your rouse checks first. Yes, to see if you yeah. added any hunger. Uh, that is a success. Dice? Is that just one dice again? Just one yeah. d10. It's either oh, a success. Oh, five. That's just... Oh, I, I succeeded I on mine, so I am feeling good. I yep, you all wake up with no nerd. additional hunger. Except for Therese. 
Yes. Sharice, you wind up with... Riza, put you through your paces. You wake up just that little bit hungrier. So, yeah, Sharice, why am I hungry? Why? Why am I so hungry? Where did my pencil go? There it is. Um, checking, checking her notes. Burnt Malk Haven. Seven Malks, three non-Malks. Fifteen kind. All mortals and kindred know is building and 25 bodies, kindred, Malkhaven, and a few ghouls, which Thoreau skated on. Prince, Malk Primogen, Compliant, Sabat, Anarch, Rain Check on Magic Book? I order breakfast. I order a snack. <laughs> They ask if you have any preferences, or if this is just a quick sup. Um, th this is a quick sup. Mm -hmm. Um, willing and uh, consensual, please. We always am, madame. One will be to your room shortly. Oh, merci. Merci beaucoup. And uh, within about 15, 20 minutes, there is a knock at your door. And there is a, um, a petite young woman there with um, what you imagine would normally be very curly red hair, but is all pulled back super tight and held into this little bun. But you can see the wave of it. It's like, I wish to be poing. Fighting, fighting nature. Mm -hmm. Sharice can relate to that. Oh, yes. But would never admit to it. And she steps inside and uh, asks if you have a preferred uh, a preferred portion of feeding upon wrist, throat, thigh. Oh, just your wrist, dear. Thank you. <laughs> she uh, <laughs> yep. She unbuttons the wrist. You feed. Knock off one. Uh, you you feed to one dot of hunger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Charisse doesn't like murders. They're untoward. They're well, here's the uncouth. Here, yeah. They're so impolite. You, you give that a lick to finish off. She bows politely and leaves. Yes, thank um, you, dear. So yes, Vern, Isabel, do you all order a snack? Do you all order a meal? Do you skip Isabel's, breakfast entirely? Do we have, gonna have a snack? Just do we have time for murder this evening? <laughs> Skipping breakfast myself. There's always time for murder. This is true. Especially in a place this accommodating. You're so accommodating. We try very, very hard. I love every one of the Disabla NPCs. Including the ones that are no longer with us by the year 2020. Hmm. Oh. Yes, this this or this guy's this guy's not surviving in twenty twenty, is he? This... No, Garrison Toussaint makes it into the 2020s. Oh, nice. This so bloodline good. is your baby. <laughs> yes, well, because they also show up in the Shadowfell. In the, in the original timeline where these characters were introduced, he survived to the 2020s. We'll see what you assholes do to him. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing but nice to this man. I like he... him. He gives me books. To be fair, though, we me. did kind of just set him on the trail for absolute murder. Um... If if we don't accidentally kill him ourselves, someone else absolutely might. I certainly hope not, though. I love him dearly. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, th I think after... I think after Charisse has breakfast, she'll she'll knock on, on Vern's door. It's like... I will answer. Yeah? Um... What ah. did we learn last night? My notes are a little... I must have been rather perturbed because I don't remember what happened and my notes are a little... chaotic. Yeah. We learned a lot last night. Let's, let's go inside, dear. Let's I will see. step aside from yeah. the door and <laughs> let you in. Alright, so... so... 
the, ha the, the Malkavian Haven burned down, a few ghouls were killed, uh, Mr. Thoreau skated, but what actually happened was I had a vision of seven Malks and seven Malkavians and three non Malkavians dying. Yeah. It seemed rather horrible just watching it from the outside. Oh, well, maybe that's what caused the memory lapse. It sounds very traumatic, but. Yes. Yes, it was. You hear Mortimer whisper inside your head. She nods silently. Because uh, Charisse plays us closer to the vest and has no idea what happened last night. Um, who did, did we speak to anyone about this? We spoke to Garrison Toussaint. Oh. Was he in on it? Mm, don't believe so. All right. It also seemed to be news to him and he was deeply disturbed by it. Hmm. Said he was going to send some messages and see what he could learn, but that we should probably stay out of it. However, he also then asked for our help, so... Alright. Um... We're no longer investigating, we're just following what he's saying now. Alright. Yes, um... If Seb... If you haven't noticed, um... We Malkavians have a thing about, um... Maybe presence isn't the right word, because I know the Toreador have a discipline called that, but... For seven Malkavians to die horribly in one place and not any other Malkavians notice... is... suspicious. Very, very suspicious. From what I understand, it seems downright alarming. Yes. But they might have been Sabato or An Anarx? Possibly. Alright. Thank you for the uh, emphasis there, John. <laughs> um, Alright, was, was Isabel in on that? Yes. It's about this point you hear the knock at the door because Isabel's had her snack oh. and has decided to come over and knock on Vern's doors first, obviously. Come in, Isabel. You're, you're, you didn't, you didn't wake up and feel the pull to Charisse's room. Hmm. Huh, that's... I accept this premise. Because Malk life is weird life, and it just always is. Hello. Alright. Oh, hello, dear. Um, is apparently, um, so Mr. Thoreau's a, ma uh, a mass murderer of Kindred. Uh, allegedly, yes, that's what, um... So we should really that's just... What, right, that's what Risa told us. Who? Oh, there's another. You know how you. Uh... I'm gonna give you a very like solid look of do not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Someone we met at the bar last night. <laughs> oh, so another Malkavian. Uh, is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of All them. Right. Yes. All right. Um... Definitely, that makes. That's. Uh, a thing that is true, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm looking at you like, shut up now. Just shut yes, up I, now. <laughs> well, I've read in my notes that I had a terrible vision of fiery Mulcavian death. That's yes. probably what knocked the entire night out of my memory, to be honest. That would make sense. <sighs> Goodness. So yes, I think we should just stay out of this matter entirely. This is clearly there are some strange things going on in Paris. We do not need to be involved. Although, apparently, whatever's happening has put a rain check on my magic book reading, which is sad, but yeah. this sounds very bad and dangerous and dramatic. And... Yeah, that's... Uh, Although, I, I, I mean... Vern, I know that the Nosferatu are currently dealing with the possible hunter problem, but really, they haven't noticed this... <coughs> well, I mean, they, pro they might not know you're traveling with a Malkavian, but... Hmm. I don't know. This just, just, just for this to happen and no one notice until apparently I have a vision in a hotel room. That's that's bad news all round. Maybe we should cut our trip in sh in Paris short. 
Maybe we should move on to Vienna where... Well, I mean, Vienna doesn't sound that much safer for Isabel. No. I mean, who... Uh, I mean, I'd hate to leave here for this reason and then find out that Isabel's enemies have also mass-murdered Malkavians because, well, I would... That would be also awful. I would like to ask around with some of the Nos before we head out of town. If we are going to head out of town, I feel that I... Oh, Garrison, that much at least. Oh, and and Monsieur Toussaint uh, did ask us for assistance. Yes. Did I agree? I, I don't remember. Yeah, and I, out of character, don't remember what she agreed to. He asked you to speak to the Nosferatu and for um, someone Risa <laughs> to speak to the Malkavians because it. No offense was intended to Isabel, but. He feels like he has a stronger connection to the local clans, especially since the major Nosferatu Haven is directly below his establishment. Yeah. And the and it sounds like he thought he had a much stronger tie to the Malkavian community, though you're not familiar with why he might believe that. But he didn't ask me for help. What? Yeah. It, My he, husbandos. He, no. He, there's something about that that genuinely seemed wrong to him. And the thing is, nothing about dealing with the Ventru or any of the other high clans was a priority at that moment. And the Nos and the Malkavians weren't necessarily going to be any more willing to open up open up to a rando Ventru. They'd at least be marginally more inclined to open up to a rando Nos and a rando Mouth. Is Toussaint a Ventru? I thought it was Toreador. He's Toreador, yes, oh. but that's why he wasn't specifically asking Isabel oh. to yeah, do yeah, anything, totally. why he was asking the two of you. Isabel needs to figure out something to do, because I have no idea what she should do. But So I'm going to convey that information to Charisse and uh, say that... I need to you know, know, speak to... Which... Did he Did he have a Melkavian in mind? Because, I mean... Go back to, we could just go back to the bar we visited. If, they, if seven Melkavians died horribly and no one noticed, that suggests to me that the Malkavian, some Malkavian was complicit and me asking questions is going to get me also set on fire in a not in hmm. an awful awful way um, I, I, he did I not know. give us a specific name he just said the Malkavians in general if he it, also seemed oh. to have a fairly good relationship with them if it helps I could go with and like very politely use my you know powers to ask anyone to try to set you on fire to very politely not do that instead. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Um, on one that hand... is a thing I can do. That is that is something that I can help with. I mean, on one hand... <laughs> is, that, is that the funniest way that you've heard Dominate ever described? <laughs> it's usually not associated with polite requests, no. <laughs> Um, on one hand, I would rather not go into this by myself. <laughs> on the other... Um, how, how do I break this to you, Isabel? The, the Vontru yes. are not the only ones who know that trick. Fair enough. I just thought I might offer something that could be helped with. Uh, and... Like that's Malkavians who are already yeah. fine with murdering their own kind potentially are not going to think twice about doing something awful to a young Von True with no connections, no local connections. I just, I, I don't know, I, I mean, would, do you think Monsieur Toussaint would be upset if I just didn't? do any of this and just stayed home stayed in my hotel room Monsieur Toussaint and did something more mundane be, research I think he would be disappointed but I think he would also be understanding if you would really prefer not to involve yourself with this I don't think he would hold it against you in fact he, he suggested for this is a favor that he asked us to that he asked the two of us and a third unrelated individual to do for him you are currently under no... You, you you agreed to nothing of the sort. Oh, oh, all right. If you would... So, like, now that's all that said, 
I don't think it will be like I, I feel like having your help in the investigation would be, you know, really, really helpful. Mm. On account of, you know, you're you. <laughs> In terms of, like, finding things out and sniffing out lost clues, um, I don't imagine that there are that many people I know better than you. Not, 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 not as close to it, anyway. Uh, I mean, not I as, do... Not as, in, not as, uh, uh, intimate. Never mind. Um. Um, I mean, I, I am good at, at finding out secrets, but, um... The idea of, of socially maneuvering through the Malkavian courts of Paris when hmm. there was a mass murder recently uh, is giving me pause. And Isabel turns to Vern and asks, Should I? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about right now, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no, probably not. Hmm. The point is, we know someone who would be comfortable with this. <laughs> this is what it is to be friends with the Mulcahy. Leave me yeah. out of it. Eternal struggle. And Isabel sighs somewhat awkwardly and says, Therese, I apologize for this. And wraps her and, and wraps her like arms around her and just kisses her. <laughs> um... So, Charisse makes it, and just like completely <laughs> stiffens up, and you wonder, you know, Malkavians aren't supposed to be this corpse-like when they're awake, and then there's kind of a moment where, like, the body goes limp, and, and then suddenly someone is kissing you back. Mm. It's probably and not Charisse. the Charisse. blood bond kicks in. <laughs> the, the kiss is dead. And Riza probably kisses you like you've never been kissed before. Because Malkavians don't don't follow other people's societal norms or standards. And are yeah, it's a, it's incredibly a, creative. Yeah, it's it's a little weird for you to watch at first, Vern. Like you're I, you watch I'm gonna just turn away. away. I was like for some reason Riza has a very flexible tongue. Oh, yeah. Get a room. This one's mine. <laughs> God help you, Isabel, if Riza ever learns Dometer's will. <laughs> what, what? What? What is that? Which? which that sounds like the horniest mind? vampire power I've ever heard. Not gonna lie. Dometer's. I'm sorry. Dometer's favor is a level two dominate ability that was this added in the D5 now. companion. Okay, I'll look it up later. Mm -hmm. I could use some Dominate. I'm sure Sharice would never be bold enough to use it, but someone else might. <laughs> Isabel knows how this would work. <laughs> well, All right. Okay, so good. Uh, what that, did I miss? I was, well, I was hoping that would work, because that would be very awkward if it didn't. Um, <laughs> hello. Um, well, basically, Sharice uh, said that she was not precisely amenable to helping in the investigation. She's because shy. she was, she was well scared. She wanted to like not have to deal with socially maneuvering through the Malkavian courts while investigating a, mur a mass murder. Mm. She very uh, reasonably well, didn't want to get set on fire, but you know. I mean, yes. Well, I mean, sometimes it can be fun, but it's it takes a very measured and very controlled environment. And we'll talk about that later because right now mass I think murder let's not yeah, listen. Um, I may find you very attractive, but how about not that? <laughs> let's not do that all one. Right, priorities, priorities. Um, all right. So... She's so weird for fur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are learning that? so much about your sister and her types this trip. Yeah, just like. See, I feel like the funniest thing about this is I feel like. Aside from like the blood bond, I feel like also <laughs> Prisa is just exactly the kind of person that she would have <laughs> this kind of relationship with. Let's be real. It's it's either that or an athletic Gaelic gangrel, but no one else knows about that one. <laughs> yeah, that just never came up, and it didn't make sense to continue, so I did. <laughs> but yes, there's a fling. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reese is an experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> Things I did not expect to happen in my vampire game. This. Whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> Let's just say in I built... In fairness. <laughs> this I built this vampire. character before I knew I was Ace. <laughs> Which is why maybe she's a bit overcompensatory. I... Fuck it, it's a word now. That's a oh, mood. Yeah. That's funny. So, um... I am, right, not, so... I am not Ace, so I, I don't... I just... I, I'm not Ace. Isabel's just into this. <laughs> so... Vern, are you gonna go talk to the Nosferatu? Yeah. Or try to, because they're busy with other things right now? Yeah. Which are hopefully not related, because that would be terrifying. GM, how much... Do I need to roll to know how terrifying hunters can be? Or may I riff? Who would this be? I th- I'd say, I would say a cult. Make me either an intelligence, uh, make me an intelligence academics or intelligence occult check. Oh, occult, always occult. Uh, would would my sorcery skill spec come into it? They're not usually sorcerers. They're usually there are hunters who use magic, but not the same type of magic that mages use. Yeah, because they often hunt mages too. Yeah. Uh I have four successes but a one on my hunger die. Okay. You still ultimately succeed, but uh Am I hungry again? You you feel you feel Sharice, which is your beast, growling with her little... You are shameless. Meat. How dare you? <laughs> what on but, um, earth is uh, wrong with you? God, it's, it's going to be so awkward to have her explain this to Sharice, because I'm going to give Sharice will remember the kiss, but like that did happen. Well, see, Sharice Sh- might block that part out because of the trauma. Like, th- that might actually be blocked out because of trauma. Um, yeah, at that point, um, a lot of what Risa knows about Hunters has been a lot of, like, hearsay and Ravno stories while out, you know, having fun. Instead of putting her nose in a book and reading historical accounts. Yeah, Risa Risa gets her information orally. Um, Hashtag phrasing. Hashtag folklore. So, you've heard stories of hunters that talk about them as little more than jokes, just like humans wiggling sticks in the air. And you've heard stories of hunters that make them sound like what would happen if a gangrel's hunting prowess was put inside with a bruja's physical capabilities and just the general savagery of a frenzy. Is it, is and, it fair to say there's a rumor that some hunters have true faith? Oh, that's not a rumor. Oh, that's, that's a thing. That's there a are thing. there are definitely hunters that have true faith. Would there you... are hunt not not all hunters have true faith, but more than a few do. The most dangerous hunters have disturbingly high levels of true faith. They don't need holy symbols to hurt you. They just do. So... Uh, the most ridiculous story you ever heard was of a hunter who was so full of faith that they practically bled sunlight. Now, I can't that's help one of those stories. I think that could have been a mage, too. And just someone got confused. <laughs> it's possible. But it's it's the story you were most likely to go, go home, sir. You've had too many drunks. Mm. You... It, that, that seemed like the most ridiculous story. Like a young hunter quivering, shaking a stick around that you believe a skilled hunter able to take down four kindred okay sounds a little ridiculous but i mean if he knew what he was doing and had the right gear maybe oh but i'm also a malkavian yeah so i'm not necessarily going to discount bled sunlight into your mouth i find that one a little hard to believe um well being a malkavian 
she's not necessarily going, especially Riza, is not going to discount the ridiculous because, yeah. well, hashtag Mulk life. Yeah. And probably Riza would have had the terrible idea to ask Mortimer and maybe get backed up by echoes of the Mulk network in dealing with hunters. So no. Yeah, the Mulk, the Mulk network basically reinforms that it's yeah. it's somewhere in the middle. Like, like yeah. you... You, they're you they're a problem. They're not they're not idiots. They are potentially a big problem, and not just for masquerade breaches. Hunters are a big problem. Sometimes it's... the stupider hunters are a bigger problem than the competent ones, because the competent ones like to help keep this shit quiet too. So, but um, um no no Malkavian ever backs up the stuff. They've all heard rumors like that, but no one's ever seen someone bleed sunlight. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit far-fetched, but yeah. So, um, youngins, let, let me tell you some things about hunters. I didn't want to bring this up with Monsieur Toussaint, and I recommend you do the same, especially since the Nosferatu are trying to keep that in-house. And... I, if, if, the, if anyone can deal with this problem quietly, it's the Nosferatu. Some... So there are hunters that are just humans hopped up on vengeance make mistakes cause masquerade breaches cause some damage and then are taken out and then there are hunters with a capital H who whether they have some sort of magical powers of their own or are just very very well trained will kill you and I, I don't, there are a lot of strange stories as to how, and there are some that are just, they are very competent anti-kindred assassins. Because like I said, given enough time and effort, anyone can, <coughs> anyone can become an operator. So, and a lot of them are buck wild nuts. Or that's some of what I've heard is... I've heard stories of, of smooth operators, you know, that guy who just suddenly dropped dead and turned to ash in the middle of court three years ago. Oh, it must have been Hunter. Um, I've also heard stories of hunters not caring what kind get in the way of their mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially during the Crusades, more than a few of them. Now, obviously, <coughs> I, I come into some very colorful tales. But that said, I don't discount the colorful ones out of hand, given what I've learned from those colorful tales. So, do not meddle. I, I was glib about this yesterday, but do not mess with hunters. Do not. If there's a reason the Nosferatu are keeping this in-house, it's because they already have an effective method of dealing with it. Because announcing that there are hunters confirmed in town and have already started killing kindred, that will cause a mass panic. Which will make investigating this situation more complicated. That we said, don't need to muddy the waters. <clears throat> that said, a hunter wouldn't think twice about... Well, some hunters wouldn't think twice about murdering 15 kind to kill ken 10 kindred. But if if there are kindred in this city using hunters for their own ends, that is terrifying. That person will be blood hunted. So I recommend you do not copy that example if that is what we are dealing with. Yeah. All right, throwing that idea out. Yes. Don't mess with hunters. Got it. There, there's a reason uh, your new Nosferatu friends didn't invite you along on the hunt. That's because they don't know you, and they don't know if they can trust you to, you know. That's fair. They when when kindred deal with hunters, they need to know their team, and they know know who they're hunting with. It's 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 serious business. So. I've, I've heard stories where they have religious fervor and zealotry to rival the Sabbat, which is saying something. Anyway, so, um... I 
I mean, that could be another angle, is Ten Kindred died and was covered up because hunters did do it, and the prince or whoever's involved doesn't want anyone to know that. Because mass hysteria, blood hunts, pitchforks, and torches. Right. So, like, I'll... Like, the fact that seven Malkavians died and no one noticed, that is a big... That is strange even for us. So, I have a way to spin this, which is just, I had a random vision because I'm a Malkavian. What the heck, Miss Primogen? Um, on one hand, it would be nice to have backup. On the other hand, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to be patronizing, but you two are young and inexperienced, and your minds are very malleable. I think that's a very fair assessment, honestly. And if there's one thing Elder Malkavians know how to do, it's mold the minds of the <clears throat> young to their own purposes. I'm not an elder, though, so don't worry about it. Um, so, you, I don't you know, say, I wouldn't yeah, mind mold having... Mold the minds of the young to your own purposes, you say, as Isabel is kind of falling over here right now. <laughs> <laughs> so... And on one hand, it would it would be nice to have an invisible Nosferatu friend backing me up. On the other hand, an Elder Malkavian would be able to see you, probably. So. Besides that, I need to talk to the Nosferatu yes, myself. And Isabel Dolan, um... Yes? I appreciate your um, impetuous nature, but sometimes you shoot off at the mouth when you shouldn't. Oh, I'm so sorry. Which I... is, sometimes it's helpful because it, it grants other people deni plausible deniability. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're gonna, we're going, I'm assuming I'm about to try and talk my way into the good grace of the Malkavian Primogen or someone of that level, and, um, mm -hmm. sweetie, you might get into trouble you can't get yourself out of. Here's the funny thing about this. If Sharice were saying this to Isabel, Isabel would like, be I'm like, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna do it anyway. But because but number one crush said it. But Senpai said it. Yes. Senpai has noticed you and is saying this. Trust and you senpai. desperately want And you desperately want a Senpai that notices you to become your waifu. Yes, yes. That's, uh, of course. Um, what would you like me to do then? Um, Ugh. After so all, this, if there's this someone... is where it's annoying because in character, Riza wants to say just stay put and don't cause any trouble. Out of character, I don't like sidelining my fellow players. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. If you tell her to stick around here while you two go off and do things, that just means that should anyone that uh... had been called by Garrison come in while you two are out, Isabel's the first one they talk to. Actually, yeah, so I'll Thank you, because I, I I don't like sidelining my fellow players. Um, Isabel, I have plans. <laughs> you should stay here in case Monsieur Toussaint uh, has <laughs> any additional guests or visitors involved in this situation, or that he's uh, bringing in for his help. So that see if I can learn something, see if I can learn something from what they from what they have in terms of information. Or they may know better how a young Von True can help in this situation than I can since I don't live here. I appreciate that because I don't really know how much a young Von True in this situation can help either unfortunately. I mean... I have not met any other Von True in this city so far actually. Oh really? Oh that's too bad. Yeah no I haven't. Yeah no I haven't. <laughs> Alright. So you haven't been hanging out with the Von True hangout? No because I've been hanging out with uh, Charisse and Vern. We went to a rough Malkavian fake. bar. <laughs> Oh yeah, and you wanted to hang out with the Fae and, and sign fae. contracts. That was that, that was different. And sign some <laughs> no strings contracts. <laughs> All right. So what um, was it you were saying about trouble she can't get herself out of? <laughs> I mean, we some people have to learn the hard way, you know. But they they learn just the hard way. I'm gonna miss Boston. <laughs> You keep the saying that. The smoking crater of vines and silver <laughs> and iron. Oh, God. All right. So, um, 
I guess we'll go on our respective uh, socializing excursions and meet back here in um, what time is it? Uh, about this point, it's probably about five thirty ish, six o'clock. In the morning or in the evening? Evening. Oh, okay. So it's winter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, um, should we aim to meet back here around midnight? Sounds good to me. All right. To be mm -hmm. fair, for Vern, it's a short trip. Yeah. Well, so long as there are knots downstairs. That's true. All right, so um, <clears throat> I guess I'll go back to the dusty spade and see what my my bartender friend did. I even get it. I did. I get his no Maurice Dumont. I got his name. You were given his name before you got there. Oh, uh, Cherise got his name. That's fine. That's what she's for. <laughs> All right, break. All righty. Well, since Risa doesn't get to stretch out her legs terribly often, it's been mostly Charisse for the better portion of this campaign. And, and Chris has been extra brain fogged and fatigued for the last several episodes, and now I'm awake. Yeah. So oh. let's have the uh, let's have Risa get her bit done first, and then we'll right. move through uh, Vern and Isabel. Yeah, my so brain's been... foggy tonight, actually, so if we don't get to what Vern does then until next time, that would be fine. I'm perfectly fine if this yeah. guy's to be the race. I'm perfectly fine if this guy's to be the Reza show, because this is Reza's yeah. episode. We can always cover up the rest, uh, not next week, but two weeks after. I mean, we did spend, like, totally 90 right. minutes role-playing, just straight role-playing, barely any roles, and that was very fun. I'm glad. I love it. Yeah. So... so okay. Reza, you find yourself into the dusty spade. It's relatively early in the evening, so people haven't turned into the drunken gropers they were when Sharice walked in here last. But people are already starting to get well into their cups. Mm -hmm. uh, the instant you walk in, you make immediate eye contact with Maurice. He noticed you. It, his eyes were trained at exactly where your eye level would be when you walked through the door, like he was expecting you. Hmm. Uh oh. He jerks his head to the right and steps out from behind the bar, speaking to his uh, to his employees to maintain things. And he tries to lead you down into a side room. Yep. Yeah. She goes. She's Her, her allies know where she is and will tell Monsieur Toussaint where she is if she does not come home. And because he knows that you understand and speak French, he just speaks in French to you the whole way because okay. I don't have to accommodate the Americans right now. Mm. Uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Dumont? All right. Would you care to explain to me why ever since about two or three in the morning last night, more or less every Malkavian in the city has been smelling smoke and has been hearing distant screams. Something seems to have happened, and it happened shortly after you came up out of the other woman who was here. So I'm wondering if you happen to know this. Um... And that's why you came back this way, because I also had a feeling you were going to be coming in today. I mean, that's fair. We just ripple through reality like we do. Um, and, uh... um, I think I had a vision about the, um, the haven that burned down. Yeah, yeah. I know the kindred who lost their ghouls there. It's a terrible mess. I, I, uh, would this be our perception or insight check? Or whatever it is in this game? Because she's well, like... Are you trying to scry the soul, or are you just trying to use your instincts for reading people to get information out of them? Uh, instincts for reading people. Does he actually believe his <clears throat> his alive friend just lost a few, few ghouls there? Yeah, in that case, that would be, uh, wit's insight. Okay, that's not... not my best roll. 
Well, if you wish to come up with a good reason why it might be a different statistic. Um. She's. Uh, I mean, I could scry. I could just scry the soul. But you said that I can't necessarily tell if he's lying. No, you wouldn't be able to tell if he was lying. Not unless you scored a critical success mm. against him, at which point you could, at my discretion, gain some knowledge that would not normally be revealed via the options under Scry the Soul. <clears throat> which you could very well get. So that's how some kindred of a certain age with Auspex are able to just read your mind. They just scry the information out of your skull. Mm -hmm. And they've got a large enough dice pool that they just do beat you. <laughs> Actually, she. I'm still gonna do. I'm still gonna start with just the basic insight check, but she's gonna preface. So, your friend's haven burnt, and all he lost was a few ghouls. Ah. I mean, he lost ghouls, and then a couple of people he was grooming to become new ghouls. Okay, this this I'm gonna insight check. Okay. Three successes. Yeah, seems genuine. If a little bit annoyed because he still hasn't received an answer about the screaming and the smoke. Okay, well, the vision I had about it was rather more graphic than a few ghouls. All right. And yet, no one else, no other member of our family has noticed until my strange American behind walks into into your town. Noticed what? How would I be able to see a vision of of that event if there hadn't been a, a member of our family in the building? Easy. You did it through a ghoul. I didn't do it through a ghoul. When was the last accounting of our people, and were there any visitors that could have been caught up in this? The last count was just after Zephyr was put out. Um, visitors? Not that I'm aware of. Why? You're saying there was a Mount Cayman in the fire? I suspect there might have been more than one. And, and the fact that you don't know about this either means you're an excellent liar, which, you know, respect, or what the hell could shield the entire local population of Malkavians from an event like that? And why? Okay, so, but I just want to be sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that there were, what, two, three Malkavians caught in that fire? Something and like that, it. and that, you assume it was. It definitely wouldn't have echoed back across other people I ain't even met yet. Well, it certainly didn't going through our heads. Which is very suspicious. I'm not saying I'm saying for sure this happened. I'm saying what I I'm saying. There are pieces missing. Well, if there is, it's not the Malkavian population. Last I heard, we were all accounted for. Not unless someone made some illegal chill, though. Hmm. But then, what would that have to do with the Nouveau Riche Bruja that apparently torched the place and got away with it? Like that asshole needs an excuse. Hmm. Probably going to use some motor shell company to try and purchase the land for cheap now. Turn it into something else. I mean... 
I don't mean to pry since I'm new to town, but I mean, how does Paris feel about Anox if they had a squat of some kind? I mean, Helene has one of two sort of princes. We have Thorian princes, or we have Bruja princes. To be fair, the Bruja princes usually aren't around terribly long, but they usually gain enough support when there's enough civil unrest, and even if they're not running things, there's usually more than a few Bruja. We go through enough revolutions, there are enough hotheads eager to make change. It's, it's what they do. As for the Anarchs, a lot of Bruja are Anarchs. And, to be honest, Gary has no issue with the Anarchs. Hmm. The Anarchs that exist here in France are uh, long-standing allies. When Paris has called for help, the Anarchs have always answered. Unless they were dealing with something else, like, you know, the Samad. Well, that's the thing. If, I mean, unfortunately, members of our very sensible family can fall into their ranks as well. But if someone had torched a house full of Sabat, they'd be bragging about it. Well, I mean, they wouldn't Wait, when, did this come in? When, when did torching a house full of Sabbath come up? Well, no, I mean... If if Malkavians died in a fire set by another kindred, that's treason, where I come from. Yeah, it's treason. Especially if they are definitely a kindred. But if, if Malkavians died in this incident, and the other Malkavians don't even know... What the hell's going on? All right, I know by most people's standards, we Malkavians don't make sense. But you're not making a whole lot of sense right now. You're saying that there were a few kindred inside that haven who were Malkavians, but whose deaths were somehow shielded by the other Malkavians who also were not able to detect the presence of these kindred through our connections. And yet my ass trapes into Paris and three days later I have a vision of smoke and fire and screams. Are you what? sure you're not picking up on something that hasn't happened yet? Or something that happened a while back? I am not sure about that. In which case, I maybe should talk to someone with some political clout and give him a warning. See, this is why I like talking to family. We all think of things the others don't think of. Well, that's because they don't get the things we get. We can free associate like no one else. So... I mean, I would hope in this case it's something and they happen happened yet, because uh, if it's something that's happened and was covered up, I'm in a lot of trouble. Oh, what did you do? Go hunting off to uh, to the sheriff and tell him that a bunch of uh, kindred were murdered in the fire already? It, it, right, because I'm sure no Malkavian has ever done that before and lived. I don't even know who the sheriff is. Like, I get here and I'm like, do I need to present myself to the prince? They're like, not in, uh, depends on what kind of relations you want with the prince. And I'm just like, really? What the hell kind of city is this? It's one run by a hedonist. I, I, just, I mean, I've met hedonist. Well, I've seen. I've met hedonist princes and they still. You gotta present yourself at court and get acknowledged. No. No, sweet out. You've met princes... Of the New World. You've met princes that have a strong enough connection to their humanity that they wish to abuse their abilities to satisfy the lingering ghosts of their libido. You've not met a hedonist until you've met the Principality. All right, I'm certainly intrigued now, but, but priorities... <laughs> either a bunch of, either some Malkavians died or about to and I seem to be here in a position to stop it from happening 
so who do I talk to about that who isn't the sheriff who probably doesn't trust any of us as far as he can collectively throw us? Or her. I don't, or them. I don't know. I'm new here. It's a mad sheriff, yeah. Okay. He's a, uh, he's a Ventru. He's, uh, decent for a Ventru. Um, Still would rather I mean, talk about this in house before alert and. <laughs> look, if you want to try speaking to Zaprimogen, I mean, I can send some whispers through. I don't know if she has the time to speak with you, uh, but I can see if I can arrange something. I mean, I'm just happy to hear we have a Primogen here. That's not the case in every city. Not every city has a large enough Malkavian presence in order to uh, require there to be a Primogen. I mean, here we're almost as populous as the Nosferatu. Okay. There's, there's more than enough of us here to require the presence of a primogen. Well, even so, when sometimes the high clans don't consider us in great numbers to still equal the high clans' need for a primogen. Yeah, but when you can blackmail people by pulling out all their dirty secrets and um, let's just say you don't want certain other people finding out uh, who's responsible for killing that favorite ghoul slash favorite child 200 years ago. Mm. True. Thank goodness for the Libertine Prince of Paris. I assume. Anyway, um... Thank God we're one of the best information gatherers right up there with the Nosferatu. There's a reason we get along so very well. Mm. <coughs> Even so, um, I'd rather talk to one of our family in the know than start spreading my wacky American visions among the Nosferatu that I haven't even met yet. So, I mean, if you can put some whispers in, like... I'm I can talk to each of the primogen. I have no guarantee that she has room for you tonight, but... I can see what I can do. I get the distinct impression that if you knew I was coming, and whatever I experienced last night is ricocheting off the brains of all of our assembled family in town, she might make some time in her schedule. If only to ream me out for being irresponsible with my brains. Which I is, mean, that's fair. is I mean, I mean, I think that's because I happen to have met you the night before. I mean... Everyone else I've spoken to has no idea what was going on with you, and they have absolutely no idea why they've been having the, the sounds and the smoke. So I figure that's why... And there's some knock at his door. We? Oui? <laughs> and the door opens. I obfuscate in a corner. <laughs> and there are... Uh, and there are three very... Thin uh, gentlemen in uh, black suits with dark hair. Looks just a little bit greasy. That comes down to their uh, to their shoulders. I, the, like you can tell from their faces that they're three different people. But if you were just looking at them out of the corner of your eye, you'd swear somebody had just triplicated himself. Really ugly technocrats. Um, Mask of a thousand. What have we got? They, you might mistake them for, like, greasy technocrats, maybe. Oh, wait, I have heightened them. senses on. Do they have heartbeats? No. Okay. I'm going to stay no, obfuscated no, no. in a corner. Right. So what are you three... Okay. I mean, if they're malks, I'm I'm made anyway, but, you know. All, all three of them are, are looking where you're standing. I, I undo obviously. All right. At least I'm getting done in by my own people. Um. I mean, I'm an American. I'm assuming that whatever go is going wrong is my fault. It's just our way. So the the three of them take up positions: one in front of you, and two on. Not quite on either side. They're standing like a half step behind you, and they're just sort of basically forming a, a triangle around you, and then proceed to escort you off the premises. Do they all read as Malks? It's weird. Oh like, no, not they, weird. They, 
you're having trouble reading them. Like, they're clearly kindred. Hmm. But they're... It's a little bit like when you try to plug in a USB, but you're holding it upside down. Like, you know it should connect, but the connection's not making. Interesting, considering I'm investigating a mass murder of Malkavians that no one noticed because it was just out of sync with our version of reality. Uh, mm. The three of them escort you into a carriage. Um, uh, I'm quietly in my head talking, uh, Mortimer, am I in mortal danger? You hear no response. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck me. Uh, you are escorted into the carriage. Uh, one then climbs into the driver's seat, and the other two uh, climb up onto a seat facing backwards on the other side of the carriage. Uh, you can tell this because you can hear the sounds of them climbing up and the carriage shaking. And you feel the carriage start to travel down. And you are in this carriage for maybe about 30 or 40 seconds before you realize that it's not so much that no one's been sitting in the seat across from you inside the carriage, but the, the darkness itself has prevented you from seeing the person oh, no. sitting on the other side of the carriage. And you watch as the darkness just sort of peels away like tentacles fading no, in. No, not darkness and tentacles. Two oh, people no. sitting across I'm in from so you. much trouble. <laughs> there are two people sitting across from you. One is a woman. She looks to be in her maybe late 20s, early 30s. Um, she has dark hair pulled up into a, a tight bun in the back. It's like, oh, you subscribe to the Cherie School of Hairstyling, I see. Um, she is dressed in a very what was once a very flamboyant um gown but there's um there's some scratches and holes here and there it looks like she's probably not taken off the dress in a very long time or at least never had it properly taken care of uh sitting next to her is a gentleman with bright blonde hair and nearly luminescent green eyes and he is there done up in finery that's maybe 120-ish years out of modern fashion, but Hold you on. get the impression Weren't that we he warned to about a blonde with green eyes. What's up? Weren't we warned about a blonde guy with green eyes? You're worried about a ghoul with blonde and green eyes. This guy has no heartbeat? Both of these are kindred. And the woman turns to look at you and she goes, So you wish to speak with me, child? If you don't mind a little impertinence, what are the odds of me getting out of this carriage alive? Well, alive. That depends on what you have to say to me. <sighs> Last night I had a vision of fire and screams of several Malkavians. The fact that no one else knows about anything like this happening uh, could either mean it happened a very long time ago or hasn't happened yet. I just got here. I have no idea how to gauge this. I did not mean to cause problems in your town with your family. The um, the gentleman sitting next to her looks at you and goes, and you are certain that this was seven Malkavians and then three other kindred in this fire? I didn't say that. No, but you were thinking about it quite a bit on your way here. Oh, <sighs> fair count. 
so. Am I Harbinger of Doom? Or have I just stumbled into the biggest mess of my life? I fucking hate it when you're right. I know you do. But you know I'm always right, and that's why you stay on my good side. If this is a matter of family security, I am more than happy to help. If this is a matter of family security that has already been taken care of, I am more than happy to step away. It is not. Not I either? think. I think that seven members of my clan have been replaced by imposters. And that seems like a good bombshell to end the session. Yeah? Holy shit! I didn't even consider that! <laughs> Ten people died! Ten people died, but they didn't disappear! God damn, Shimisi! Damn it! Oh no wonder god. I'm in a carriage <laughs> with Holy a Lasandra! Oh my god. god! It is the Savant! Possibly. <laughs> Holy crap, well, okay. My 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 quest just got a lot more complicated. <laughs> Does that mean the privilege is in on it and is working with the Sabat? Oh my god! Well no You are currently in, incidentally, this will be revealed to you later, but you are currently in that cart with two primogens. I was wondering about the blonde guy. Yep, the, he is the Lasombra primogen. There's Ooh, a Lasombra they have a Paris. they have a primogen here, fancy. There's enough Lasombra here in Kauri to accommodate for the time being. In, in or at least in my version yeah. of Kauri there are. That's because true. I like the Lasombra. I mean, cool. we've we've got, you know, a Shemisi Taylor surgeon guy in our town. Like, you know. It would be really funny if all of us ran into, like, a <laughs> total of six provisions just over the course of this adventure. You know what? That's not entirely uncommon in a vampire game. Just run into six provisions of here. That's, I, I will mean, say. It's, it's the ultimate, you know, question of why is... I mean, it's it's the same question you ask when you're writing a movie. Why is today different than any other day? Because I'm about to meet eight Primogen. <laughs> yes, Ari? So, holy shit, that was cool. Oh my god. Oh. Well, it was cool for you guys that weren't in the cart with the Lasombra. <laughs> no, and I mean, okay, I'm, I'm gonna gone. say right now, I have zero interest in returning to Boston. Paris is so much cooler. <laughs> But you I think we just didn't uncover enough secrets in Boston yet, but, you know. Fair enough. <laughs> so, I am a big fan. John said, John, John, I'm like, I'm a ton of cool plots in Boston. You just ignored them and left to go to Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, John, you are the one who put plot hooks in Europe. <laughs> well, again, originally this was meant to be four sessions. Yeah. And then maybe we continue. Yeah. And we decided we continue. Yeah. I, I laid continue. down plot why threads. End? I thought, why? I, I put in plot threads I thought Twenty might be fun. Seconds. Wasn't yeah. necessarily convinced we'd explore them. We explored them a little too hard. This is what gaming is intended to be. Reese is not sure what's worse. Having, having her own primogen kill her for uncovering state secrets or being forced into a quest by her own primogen. Wait, uh... I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure being killed is worse. Guess we'll find out what it, the true answer truly is in two I, weeks when we you're return. Young, sweetie. I, I, you're I do young apologize. And you're not a I, I do apologize if um if uh, Isabel forcibly kissing Charisse was a little much there. That's okay. I th it's this this character was created before many of our now common conversations about consent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been trying to figure out a different trigger and have been unable to think of one. That's fair. Or more than one, but I think okay sometimes the most uncomfortable triggers are the only good ones. Honestly. That, but this is why I put content warnings on the stream. This was, this has been why this entire time. It's always been about this. I mean, yeah, like, all right, so uh, she, she only did it because, again, to be fair, I know. the only reason Ari, she did Ari, it is because Shere streaming. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, so that was Eldritch Adversaries tonight. Uh, I'm in a whole lot of Malk trouble with my Malk family. It's so good. Yay. But I got to play Reza some more next episode, I assume. Yep. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is Magic Fish Radio. We stream t tabletop RPG actual play live stream thingamajigs on Tuesdays and Saturday nights. Um, tonight, Eldritch Adversaries, V5, Vampire the Masquerade, Roaring 1920s, currently in Paris, sometimes in Boston, once in London, never again, if we can <laughs> help it. Jeez, we thought Mithras was scary. What the fuck's happening here? Um, and yeah, so this Saturday we will be running some kind of indie game. I don't know what yet. It might just be me running Demon Hunters again, which is also very fun. I assure you. Um, I guess I'll do my the rest of my outro, and I'm at Ms. Chrysala everywhere, and at Magic Fish Radio everywhere else, because I'm the channel producer. Uh, I'm basically on every show we run, and also on Thursday nights, We Are Nerdsmith does a romp through Ragna Ravnica, where I play a dumbass, uh, a lovable dumbass barbarian tabaxi who doesn't have to worry about any of this kind of stuff, because it's just, can I hit it with my axe? Can I hit it with my axe twice? Awesome. <laughs> Don't forget her exploding kittens. Oh, yes. Uh, she's a path of wild magic barbarian. So sometime, so when she rages, she can't cast, but magic just happens. And sometimes it manifests as exploding kittens that do force damage to her enemies. I Last see. week, I got to do the Disco Lights of Protection, which is also fun. Which led to other players uh, doing disco filks mid combat, and it was amazing because it was the Dampier doing the disco, and yes, <laughs> just yes, romp through Ravnica, good time. <laughs> only only seven more episodes, so so get it. Watch us while we're fresh. Whatever. That's <laughs> Anyway, I'm everyone else do outros because I'm gonna go look for someone to raid. Right, moving uh, counter uh, moving clockwise rather from my screen because that's reverse of what we did earlier. Airy. Hi, yes, it's Airy. Hi, yes, it's Airy. Uh, what plug? To, what to like randomly plug today? Uh, you should play a if you've ever played a game called Zendo. It's a really fun game in which you construct uh, in which you confuse people by constructing things and saying this is right and this is wrong. I'm pretty sure I could give a better explanation, but I won't. Fair enough. <laughs> Dracus? Hi, I'm Dracus. Um, I've been playing Vern this evening. I am here most of the time when we're doing stuff on this channel, uh, playing Klaus on Saturdays when we're playing Exit to Eden and various other characters when we're doing indie one-shots. Um, yeah, I make short films and stuff. Next Tuesday, I've got a screenplay reading, which I will be probably passing the Zoom link around the Discord for. Um, so yeah. Join our Discord. Oh, there's no Discord link. I think Nightbot is taking a nap. I think it's that there's not enough people chatting for, huh. night, for Nightbot to wake up. But no, yeah, there's I, a I've been a little distracted to, to participate in the in the chat downstairs. You're Fair and valid. The game. That's not and fair. yes, I'm your storyteller and literally everyone else in the world. Uh, I am a content creator here on Magic Fish Radio, and I will hopefully continue to be a content creator here on Magic Fish Radio for the foreseeable future. And hopefully you will come and will be entertained and will in enjoy this. Uh, that's really the whole reason to do this, is for the players to have fun and for the people at home to have fun. To come and enjoy... Um, if you're looking for something to plug, well, look into the uh, Indigenous American created role playing game Coyote and Crow, which has a very interesting uh, lore setting to it. What if uh, it's a it's an Indigenous futurist setting, assuming that the uh, the colonizers never came to the Americas? Um, they actually have an app out that allows you to help generate names and help translate words from the in universe languages two words you understand um and the core book 
actually has an important note to players of Indigenous heritage and to players of non-Indigenous heritage. It's a very interesting system, and I highly recommend you look into it and back smaller content creators because they did a lot of really good work on this. And hey. we may or may not run it here on the channel if I feel comfortable enough running an Indigenous-backed uh, game in a, you know, on, on a stream with no Indigenous players that I'm aware of. Well, <laughs> we do know couple but could they be persuaded to run it for us so we know it's run properly i mean One... if you want to reach out to the folks at coyote and crow i mean That's true. i will happily do that. the game they run i will absolutely do that i keep meaning to look into that i need to all right so um again thanks for hanging out with us tonight if you're watching live uh well, I don't know if anyone spent channel points, but I'm starting to think the OBS is a little buggy tonight. So mm. if you did and we didn't see, I apologize. Just tell us in our Discord, which means join our Discord, which is more effective way of communicating with us than through Twitch. <coughs> just, it's just how it is. Everyone's having problems with the OBS these, this month, so I don't, I, we may not be unique. Uh, I don't know which is worse. If it's just us or if it's everyone. Anyway, join our Discord. If if you learn nothing else from my ramble, join our Discord. It's nice. Merc posts so much shit posting and it's awesome. So many memes. Um anyway, but yeah, thank you for watching us tonight. I hope we gave you adequate ridiculous distractions with poli uh vampire political machinations and paranoid roleplay. Because that's my favorite part of World of Darkness games. I don't know about anyone else, but I had fun. Um, and if you're watching via VOD, also thank you for your eyeballs. Wherever you are watching this, you are undoubtedly helping us outfox the algorithm, and that makes you a hero in my book. One of many books. A long story. Anyway, uh, we are going to go raid Perception Studio, who have. Uh, I guess it's season two of Solon's Legacy which is a D&D &D game that they've been running at this point for years. And it's very fun and very weird. And there's a lot you can do to fuck with their story and their characters, and it's awesome. Not, not that I've done that. Anyway, uh, any, anything else anyone else wants to say or announce? Did everyone get to talk? Because I was busy looking at Twitch. Yep, that was all of us. Okay. All right, so get ready to raid. Um, raid loading. All right, so until we see you next time, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and never get into a carriage uh, with a strange La Sombra. To be fair, you weren't really given a choice. I could have chose worse. But, uh, <laughs> bye! <laughs>